Malevolent Movies presents The Hunt for Bad October Trevor has selected 1988's The Nest Hey everybody, it is Malevolent Movies the Podcast, uh, episode number 29, and we are deep in the second annual Hunt for Bad October, movie number two, and I am so grateful for the movie that we have today. I'm, I, to be honest with you, I'd be grateful for almost any movie today after suffering through Spaceship Terror last week. That was, I, I, all week I've been thinking about how bad I felt watching it and talking about it. Nick is just smiling right now. Uh, Nick no, is just yeah, sitting yeah. there with a wicked He's smile. Happy. He loves it. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, that's part of the problem. <laughs> we don't have to make fun of you this episode, but I may choose to. Just to <laughs> hurt your feelings. Just a yeah. little. It, it's, it's still so close. It's only been seven days. It still feels so close. I just have to flip one page in my notebook, and there are my notes from Spaceship Terror. So it's right there at my fingertips, <laughs> literally. But uh, no, tonight's movie, though, is uh, Trevor's Choice. And what were your keywords today? Um, my keywords, let me scroll up here. I got gore and bugs. But I also had the curse called the Reaper's Misfortune, <laughs> where most of the kills need to be either bloodless or off camera. Ugh. And that's and tough. I, I feel like this kind of threads that needle, but I am perfectly fine with debating that if we need to. I th I thought about that throughout my viewing, and initially I was like, ooh, ooh I'm a little bit worried here, because it is technically gore gross out is the key word. So there's plenty right. of gross out. I fucking hate bugs. Mm -hmm. um, no offense, Nick. Um, but <laughs> um, Nick is one-eighth bug. So The one, the one, <laughs> the couple kills... The first three kills, basically the dog, the cat, and the the, the old garbage, garbage man. man. Um, yeah, like those were. It, it was like it got. It was like the dog. You, you see the the remains, so it's technically already dead. You didn't mm -hmm. see it die. The cat, mm -hmm. you do kind of see it dying, and then the old man, you see parts of him dying. You but see like his that, arm get ripped off. Yeah, but after that, most of it is like off camera or it's something that's already dead. Yeah. So I think he did good. Yeah, I feel like despite the circumstances, I, I think he did pretty good. Well, I was uh I was gonna bring up, fellas. I think we have a little bit of a blood diner situation on our hands here. No, we do not, Joe Buckley. Uh, the Ness but... The Ness is a very famous cult movie. It, well, first of all, first of all, Joe Buckley, pump the brakes on this. I I, I saw this fucking coming and I'm so glad that Ryan's here to just handle okay. this for me okay. Ryan, get him get him right <laughs> this movie is a movie nobody talks about okay it is not mm, a cult i've movie, heard of it i've heard of it before you've heard of it because you've looked into the genre i would say most horror fans that you see at conventions you go up to them you ask them what their favorite 50 horror movies are i would be shocked if most of them find a way to pull out the nest the Ness' only claim to fame, as far as far as wanting to say it's a cult movie, is that it was one of the early releases from Scream Factory when they first came out. You know, they came out of the gate in uh, fall uh, 2012 with Halloween two and three, and then they did um, Terror Train, and they did uh, the Fun House, and then like February of the following year, they dropped the Nest. But otherwise, but it wasn't a collector's edition, first of all, so they didn't even think it was worthy of a collector's edition. It was just simply a Blu-ray DVD combo. Um, and you don't, no one really talks about this movie. So it's not a cult film by any stretch of the imagination. Nobody's dressing up as shaky Jake from the nest or any, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> so if you're a big bug aficionado or an eighties horror aficionado, you may find your way to the nest, but this was a movie that was just one of the Roger Corman's Concord pictures. His wife was the producer. It was something that was made fairly low budget. I don't even know if it had a theatrical release. I used to see it on yeah, TV yeah. all the time. Well, you I know, mean, but Roger Corman's like huge in the scene. But Roger Corman's wife produced it and his company, Concord, produced it. And if you look up Concord or New Concord or New Horizons or any of the companies, he was in the, that period of time. They were pumping out tons and tons and tons of movies, very low budget, very low quality um, at the time. So while Roger Corman is a cult filmmaker and a legend and, and all these sort of things and deserve it of his Lifetime Achievement Oscar, not everything he touches automatically makes it a cult film. 
And I would argue that as much as I love The Nest, this is not a cult film. It's certainly not Blood Diner. Blood Diner mm, so, is a very Okay, popular you think that's title. more famous? Absolutely, I think Blood Diner is a lot more well-known film than The Nest. Well, we, I know we brought this up, and I believe it was in discussing Uninvited. Um, we compared the number of reviews on IMDb. So Blood Diner has 4.6 thousand um, reviews, and coincidentally, it's a 5.3 out of 10. So is The Nest. But mm -hmm. The Nest has 2.5 thousand reviews, and I believe <laughs> The uninvite, or Uninvited was like 1,000, a little over 1,000. So are we are we establishing a benchmark here? Is this is this like law in the United States? We've set precedent with Blood Diner. I think We're I think we might need to as we continue because here's the other thing: as we continue this show, this is going to get even harder. So I feel like we need to set boundaries. Like nothing under. I was just using five thousand. I know that the amount of reviews was brought up in the Blood Diner episode or yeah. in that discussion yeah. so i tried to go less than blood that was kind of my benchmark which is like we, you just said like four five thousand or forty five hundred or something uh, like that four point six yeah so yeah so i was just trying to go below that <laughs> and plus you um, know in, in blood Diner, like i brought up on the blood diner episode blood diner also you look at its prestige amongst the the film collecting community i mean when a label decides to launch their label announce to the world that they exist and they're able to follow the titles they choose must mean money to them it means that they know there's a fan base out there that's going to lap that up and get their business rolling and that's what the vestron uh pictures of vestron video through lionsgate did they launched with blood diner nobody's launching anything with the nest as much as i enjoy the nest and i think a lot of big bug fans and 80s goop fans probably enjoy it as well it's not a cult film joe and you know, it's oh, not even okay, like it. okay. And I'll defend that this is not a blood diet situation. Okay. Now, well, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw that out there. I just wanted to see where the people lay. I with appreciate it. that, Joe, That's because fine. you're trying to yeah. keep us honest. And mm -hmm. one of these days, mm -hmm. Joe, one of these days, it, it. I mean, it may be in in the 25th anniversary of malevolent movies. <laughs> you will find a moment to make us eat crow. But it's, it's not okay, today. Okay. It's not today. Hey, hey, if, if Joe Buckley gets set a flame, I figure, hey, I might as well throw a couple sparks around here. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you're on a, you're not trying to keep us honest, Joe. You're just trying to get you just want revenge. That's I all. Will, I'll give Joe some credit here, because when I saw that this had like because this has been recommended to me on on Amazon Prime, like this was a concern of opened. mine. Yeah. yeah like, so I will give Joe credit that like the concern is justified. Yeah, I get um, it. But, I get why you brought it up. But it is like you said, like because I always look at the reviews and it's got like two thousand less than Blood Diner. Like, if it was like four or five thousand reviews, eh, maybe we'd be talking. But no. Nah. And also, but okay. Okay. Zach, did you when you found Insecticidal? Did you find it through Amazon Prime? Uh, yes, watch? I believe so. Well, that's why you're getting the recommendations. Well, well, I get a I get a lot of this kind of stuff because I end up having to, my fucking TV doesn't work with Plex very well, so I have to end uh -huh. up rent. I spent four dollars on this <laughs> because it wouldn't let me watch it on Plex. Zach, I, I could have sent it to you. Better it's this fine. than the last movie, though. Am I right? Oh yeah, my no, God. I don't mind. It was four dollar rent. I'll, no, I'll you right. should have given this. You should have given this money to. Uh, well, fucking, save your receipt. Send it into. I am. The, I, was, I want I'm Spaceship Terror too. Give that guy money. I'll I think invoice I Tyler. 95 on this shit. Yeah, 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 just invoice. <laughs> yeah, make, make sure to save it for your tax records because this yeah, is right. technically a business. This is a, yeah, this is a write off. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> a business that d actually loses money every year, but yeah, <laughs> the best kind. Yeah. It's still a business. <laughs> a good, a good restaurant. It's gonna bleed money for four or five years, and then you're gonna be raking in the big bucks. That's what they always that's, say. That's, that's that what they say. Yeah. Is that a line from Blood Diner? No, it Probably. isn't. No. <laughs> I think it's Gordon Ramsay on the uh, Kitchen Nightmares or something. It doesn't have any haunted kitchen. Yeah, on that show. Um, but yeah, that was my uh, stuff. All right. <laughs> I, uh, just looked at uh, Google bug movies. This was on there. Had Tyler grab me a handful. Um, and yeah, this one uh, just. I think I. I think I texted Tyler while I was watching it. <laughs> I was just like, oh shit! I think I found it. <laughs> I think I found this. Movie <laughs> that Trevor was pretty convicted from early on so yeah yeah this and is I, it so i appreciated getting to see it i appreciated getting to see it. I, I i think there's a better movie in it um yeah but i still had a good time it's 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 decent it is based on a novel i'd be, I'd be interested to read that book i wonder if it's probably in print anymore or anything but i would be interested in reading that i mean yeah yeah it had a it had a little bit of the thing vibes i thought it, it yeah i fully agree yeah. made it, it didn't feel like the the typical 
you know, slog of dog shit. Like, you know, they there's quality to it. Real people work on this. Not as good as uh, Spaceship Terror, but well, <laughs> it was a, a good, a valiant effort. Not mm-hmm. every film can be, Nick. Not every film can okay, be. Okay, okay, okay. Wait till right. you watch it, Joe, before you even comment on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I still haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here pain-free. I'm laying here. I'm throwing mm-hmm. my feet up. I'm relaxing. I got no spaceship terror on my yeah, what watch else is list. New? Mm-hmm. You know <laughs> what? You still have to watch no, it because you have to rate it, Joe. We need you in pain. <laughs> get back in the chair. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Let's, I'm teasing you. All right, let's go. Um, so we start uh, just immediately – Concord Entertainment and then ominous music, boom, and this a uh, quick title card, the nest, and it's over as soon as it started. Um, and then we get shots of our main setting, which is the island of Northport. Um, I don't remember if they do they say where this is. Is this in California? Do we know? Is this on the east out. coast? I was a little confused. I I assumed that it's the east coast. It feels very east coast. Yes. There's a there's a men, there's a mention of there's California. There's a Northport, New York, and a uh, Northport, Florida. Well, I think mm. it's in reference to where what's her face Ruth or whatever goes, and then she comes back from there. Yeah. And there's a talk it. of California or LA or something, so I have to assume it's not there. So yeah, but I think we're on solidly on the eastern anytime, seaboard. Anytime I see a lighthouse, I just figure it's like Maine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, say Maine. That, yeah, actually, that makes and a lot of sense. And there were lobsters uh, painted on the walls. Yeah. Of the dump. Yeah. So we'll say it's in Maine, North Point, Maine. Um, <clears throat> little island community. That's where we're centering um, this movie around, just like Aquanoids, another island movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're just seeing the, we see the lighthouse, we see like the ocean, and then we go inside this house and um, it's a sheriff's house. So we know it's a sheriff's house because the sheriff is passed out, <laughs> sleeping on his bed in his full, full uniform still. Jim Hopper. Jim Hopper. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he uh, he gets a call. He gets beeped on his beeper because, remember, it's 1987. Um, and he sees it, looks at it, and grabs the phone, dials in. And he calls in the, uh, the police department and talks to Millie. She's like the dispatcher. Um, she gives him some shit for, you know, just having to, like, wake him up, basically. And says that they've been getting a bunch of weird calls that night. A uh, local guy is missing. A tourist girl has disappeared. There's an unruly dog just keeps barking, annoying everybody. And um, I forget her name, but this old lady keeps calling in saying that all the pages are falling out of the books of the library. Mrs. Pennington. Mrs. Pennington. There you go. I just called her Judel Dean in my notes. <laughs> mm. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. When 100%. We see, when we see her in that rocking chair on the street side, oh, I'm like, Joe that's a wig, in dress. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my, no, my mother's a very nice lady i'm sure she is i'm sure jules is wonderful but uh, come on yeah and, and also i mean in his defense buckley's aren't really worried about books that's mm. true at least the ones we know i, I like comic books sir <laughs> i like comic books a written word is not a buckley thing <laughs> i prefer picture books i prefer the written turd um, he says, uh, Richard says, head to the lighthouse to start to look for the missing guy. Um, also, it's the mayor's birthday today, and there's a surprise visitor coming in. That the is shirt- that like a holiday in every town, or is it I just get it's it's the mayor's that birthday. One, that Here one in Ottawa. Yeah. Oh yeah. We do it up big for Bob's birthday. Yeah, he, he ended up throwing a, a parade. Yeah, whole parade, whole festival. Yeah, no. Uh, well, you never it should know. be though. Yeah. It'd be fun. It seems like an Ottawa thing to do. Well, we see on a side. Uh... Go ahead with the jump, Jim. Oh, we're, I was we're, gonna we're, say we're, they, they tied it in here, gang. Okay, Christ. they uh, they tied it into the whole Bragu festival. It's the mayor's birthday slash <laughs> Bragu. Bragu. Bragu is is Bragu made by guys who uh, you know go to Ozfest. <laughs> Bragu. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, it's the mayor's birthday. Somebody special's coming into town. Uh, Sheriff Richard has got to pick them up and take them to the mayor's house at some point today. As all of this is happening, 
Richard is walking around his house and we see nasty little bugs skittering and scattling all over the place. <laughs> and I don't know if he, it doesn't seem like he notices them or at the very least, if he does, he doesn't care. Cause they're like, they're in the, they're in the back of the toilet. They're on the floor. They're crawling on the wall. They're in his coffee cup. He's drinking out of. <clears throat> um, yeah. It's I, fucking I disgusting. Was- I think it was a bit of a poor choice early on this so early on when we introduced this character, because yes, the movie is about cockroaches that infest a town and we know it going in because we saw the title we saw the yep. video box and et cetera. But <laughs> yeah. right away to introduce this guy and show that his house is covered in bugs. It's just like, you think the guy's a filthy bastard, you know, and he's not, he's actually no. a pretty, pretty, you know, solid dude. They needed to have the bugs in the background, like yeah. just one, Maybe you see it when he's in the kitchen. It's just scurrying across the back of the counter or something. But, like, you're just hit with the bugs immediately. And it just yeah. it just diffuses the whole thing. And I will say this. I really don't like bug movies because the camera gets in close. And I don't want to get close <laughs> to the bugs. But I yeah. will say this. I do think bugs were harmed in the making of this movie. Oh, and I feel oh, yes. bad for the bugs. I think we yeah. see bugs get <laughs> obliterated in this movie. Yes. <laughs> there are certain bugs that it's okay cockroaches i'm gonna go on, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna yeah. die on this hill sure if, if, especially if you've ever lived in a place that had a cockroach, uh, cockroach smash those fucking ro- smash them send them to hell fuck no, them. ryan you ask them to pay for some of the rent you give them a chance well, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> these are say, grasshoppers <laughs> grasshoppers can be stepped on no 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 i'm not gonna get no i'm not gonna do what? grasshopper i'm not gonna do moths i'm not gonna do there's certain bugs flies yes mothra <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, no flies, gnats, cockroaches, yeah, uh, stink bugs, stink uh, bugs. Fuck them. Send them straight everywhere. to hell. You got um, a moth, a butterfly, beautiful. You guys, you can live, ladybug. Oh, okay. Let me yeah. take you outside, spider. Hey, I don't like it, but you got your own thing going on. That's fine. Let me take you outside, caterpillars. You just on your start of your journey. But if oh, I yeah, never step, yeah, never step on. I think that's a sign of a psycho. But if one step on I a caterpillar, see a cock. That's a psycho. Oh, sociopath. Joe probably oh. fucking eats him, for Christ's sake. <laughs> mm. Anyway. So uh, I've been like... a June bug in my day. Oh, oh that's oh, another one. That's they're disgusting. Bugs. Yeah, they, they can die too. Bugs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway. Praying um, mantis can I... stick around. Those are cool. What is it, Nick? Praying mantis. Well, just back to the actual point. Uh, <laughs> showing the cockroaches too early. Uh it, it does feel weird because like we know that these these cockroaches i mean not at this second but like later on these have got to be the same unless he is a, a dirty piece of shit these are the same cockroaches that we see later on but like they're not devouring him and like there's enough of them to where like there's at least like what five ten of them in in broad daylight at this yeah. early in the movie why aren't they just eating him now so I don't know. Yes, too too soon. Too too. <laughs> maybe many. they were full. Too soon. Yeah, maybe they were full on cat or something like that. Yeah, or he maybe had a he's cat. Just he gross. didn't realize was eaten. Anyway, um, so he leaves to go start his day, and he heads down to the diner. Um, he arrives at, like as he arrives, there's a guy named Homer with like a Hawaiian shirt on. He's driving like a moped. He's getting. He's like dropping something off or getting gas. I don't, I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's doing something. He's talking to this other weirdo outside named Shaky Joe or Shaky Jake. Um, <laughs> Shaky Joe. Um, That's and- Jake. Okay. That, that, that explains my. Yes. Weirdo old guy is well, Shaky Jake. For some reason, I had uh, Richard as uh, for the first like half of my notes. His oh, name is, is Jake. I don't know how I got that confused, but whatever. It's, it's weird. It's yeah. fine. Um, uh, oh, but uh, Richard, when he arrives, he he's like, oh, Homer. And Homer doesn't like pay him any mind and just drives away. Um, <clears throat> but also on sh- outside, like I said, it's Shaky Jake, this weird old guy <laughs> who says, uh, he's like, oh, if you need to get rid of bugs, there's just one thing you got to do. And he sits and he waits and he thinks he's, um, uh, oh, don't leave food out. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Richard just kind of humors him is like. Thank you, Jake. He like lives him. in the dump, too. He yeah. lives in the dump. He's just some weird old man. So the town goofball. Everybody loves him. You know, he or I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, he goes into the into the diner. And I said, it, look, it reminded me a lot of the Blood Diner diner 
just the way it was laid out and it's like all white it's just like a white diner filled with 80s people <laughs> made me think of blood diner um, crammed full of 80s people yes there that is place no, is bumping yes there is it's the only place on the whole island to get a cup of coffee apparently oh we see and we see early in the movie the population of this place only 700 so it is a very yeah. small you know right. maybe style yeah um uh, but so he goes in, Richard goes in and he's like kind of dating the waitress. I think her name was Lillian. Something who is, like that. Who is uh, Jake's daughter. Yep. Yep. Yes. That we learn weirdly at the end of my segment. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she's the, she's like working behind the counter, filling up coffees and stuff. And uh, he goes over to her and talks for a second. Oh, and, and Jake then follows him in and says, declares the mayor's got pests. The mayor's got pests, bugs or rats. <laughs> Um, they talk somebody, uh, Cy, I think is his name, this older guy with a big mustache, um, who apparently used to be a football player. He's like an NFL per- guy. Perkins, Perkins, I think per- Mr. Perkins is his name. He, but he used to play for the Gators the back in like the eighties, apparently. Um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's there and he's, oh, rats are worse. And they're just talking about pests for a little bit. It's weird. Um, but, uh, but the waitress or Lillian was off on the mainland yesterday and came back with a gift for Richard's new pair of sunglasses. Um, he puts them out and heads out or puts them on, uh, grabs his coffee from her and heads out to tame the mean streets. Um, and he's going to see her later, apparently. Like, I, I so th- th- there's not a lot to say about like the first fucking 10, 15 not, this minutes. This is all. V- yeah, it, it, but like I Pretty kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed it initially because it's like it's been a long time since I've seen one of these movies, especially a movie I hadn't seen like this before, where you take the time to establish. We don't know, watch place, a lot of like people movies on here a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like we watch a lot of like yeah. projects. Yeah. So it was nice to watch this. Like this is just a movie. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> and 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 but but by the end of it, I was kind of on the other side where I was like, gosh, man, there's so much potential here. Like yeah. this just needed to be goofy. This just yeah. needed to be real goofy. And like, especially when they started getting the puppetry involved, I'm like, damn, that looks so it's, good. Like, it's weird that it it's played so straight. Yeah, it's played like a drama almost, yeah. but also, well, we'll get into it. Yeah, <laughs> Some wild also shit bug. happens. Yeah, also, oh yeah, and the the big uh, driving force. Oh, it's a bunch of bugs eating people. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> sure, why not? Um, oh boy. Oh, um, so uh, then we go. Um, Richard arrives at the airport helipad something uh boat plane um arrives um and out steps the mayor's daughter who is the special guest her name is elizabeth and uh oh she's richard's ex-girlfriend awkward um on the drive home they catch up they're both feel there's some tension there they're both clearly are into each other still um, we get some backstory. She's been gone for about four years, I believe. Um, she left the island for school, and Richard was understandably very upset about that. You know, it's clear they were, if not actually like together dating, they would have been like, I, I figured she left when they graduated high school, like she went away for college or something. It's kind hey, of the well, vibe. He says, I don't know why you left. Yeah. <laughs> It's like for school, like you're living on an island. She's either gonna work at the shop or at the sheriff's department. Well, like, I he wasn't got the, listening when you said that. I was he, too busy. He got the job by default. Like there was nobody else. Everybody's oh, yeah. got one job. <laughs> yeah, we his also dad, learned they say that. Yeah, his dad mm-hmm. died and he took that's, the job. Yeah, that's in this scene. He's she's like, oh, so you're the sheriff now? She's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, your dad retired? No, he died. I'm like, well, well, whoops. Every um, everybody knows that on an island you need a sheriff, you need a bug man, you need a garbage man, you mean yeah. you need like a meat oh, man. Um, imagine being, got their roles. imagine being Homer. You're on an island where there's only so many jobs, and either you chose or you're stuck with bug guy. And it's an island. There's gonna be bugs all I the mean, fucking time. He's, he seems to be pretty passionate about it. I mean it. he oh, uh, loves it. And, and he's I, part of this. I, I would imagine that extermination on an island would actually probably be a pretty lucrative gig. <laughs> I mean, the there's, there's only go. so much. There's only so much infrastructure too. <laughs> like, there's only it's a lot of wilderness out there. <laughs> <laughs> and like the home, the character of Homer is as the movie goes on, we'll see. He's a wacky character. Not only does he love being a bug man, he's a guy. Uh, you know, he throws out <laughs> the man. the scientific names, Carcharodon, yeah. Carcharodon. No, that's great white shark. But he throws out whatever the carcarious version of fucking roach is. 
Um, and he's part of this weird, like, I, I don't know what you call it, this character trait that you saw around this time, the late 80s and the early 90s, the wacky bug killer in horror movies. You had him, then like a year or two later, you had Brad uh, Dourif in Graveyard Shift. He's the rat guy. Then you had John Goodman in Arachnophobia. And I'm sure there are others, but there was like this weird, like for a while, I don't know if Ghostbusters created it, but this like Caddyshack. wacky workman. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Caddyshack. Yep. Caddyshack. And yeah, you well, have even, this- even, uh, uh, even cheerleader camp pop is, is pretty close to this yeah, this- rope. Yeah, just like wacky. a wacky old guy who's just like <laughs> there. Like he just like knows about the area. Yeah, and I love it. I love when that happens. Yeah, when I see helpful character. weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they get to oh, they drive around town or they're driving through town to the mayor's house, and she's commenting on all these things which oh, dance bar closed and all this place moved and all that stuff that you do when you um visit home after a while. Um but as they're driving downtown, they, they are quickly flagged down by Mrs. Pennington, is her name? Mrs. Oh, Buckley. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, looks like Joe in a dress. If you guys, if, if listeners, if you've seen that, that ad we did where Joe was in a dress <laughs> in a wig a couple years back, it looks like that. She's complaining about all the books that she's getting from the library. They're all falling out of the pages. Like something's eating them or she thinks somebody's like pulling them out or something. It's a whole. It's dumb. The, the, um, yeah. Those naughty teens have been eating the bindings of my precious <laughs> books. <laughs> yeah, that one stop them. <laughs> That's right. It's a uh, weird. It's a weird leap of logic. The 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 glue uh, and the bindings of all the books overnight have disappeared. It must be teen hooligans. I, hey, bro, you want to go down to the library and destroy some books? Yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah, bro. Let's do it. Let's snort that glue. I let's get, melt yeah, it down. Yeah, I hear you can get high. Hey, let's let's glue out yeah. together. Let's do it. Let's glue them together. <laughs> Um, next we go to the mayor's house. Cause that scene just kind of ends just, Oh, say hi to your father, Beth. She says, um, Miss Judeldine says, and that's off to the mayor's house. Um, and we go inside and we see Mr. Perkins. That's mustache man from the diner. Um, kind of basically telling the audience what the gist is with the Island right now, which is, um, he is a merchant of some kind. I don't think they ever say what he owns. But he owns some kind of a shop or maybe a hotel or something on the island. And he's trying to do um, renovations on it to be done in time for the tourist season, which is coming up or is like starting right now. Um, But he needs more money to like get that finished. And the mayor who we see um, just like bored listening to him flipping through papers (laughs) Um says, um, well, we agreed to give you a loan, me and this company, Intech, um, but we're going to do that when Intech wants to. So you just have to deal with it, basically. Um, and that's pretty much all that happens other than um, the uh, the mayor threatens Perkins saying, you know, hey, I'm not going to let some punk ass <laughs> um, uh, merchant, um, you know, block this development because in tech is this company that's coming in to modernize the island i don't believe they ever give any more context to that do you guys remember are they building like well well they're building condos, condos or something are yeah. they okay i figured it was yeah. just some 80s eh, condos but i think that's the trade-off i think that it was yeah, a real a detriment to the film to not show like the in tech lab or something. Yeah. They don't, you just get Hubbard or whatever yeah. her name is. Yeah, you don't get Hubbard's lighthouse lab. <laughs> which is pretty yeah, cool. The closest, but the closest you get is the map that you see where the right. in tech takes up like a fifth of the island for yes. their, you know, so you know they're they're a big thing. But yeah, I think that's the trade-off. It's like, look, we need a place to build our facilities because we're doing some shady shit. And this mayor, thinking in the best interest, much like uh in Shaw's, yeah, thinking yeah. about the best <laughs> interest of the island, makes a deal, but I think he makes the deal in good faith. I never yeah, once I agree. Think yeah, he doesn't really a bad guy. Yeah, he you doesn't know? feel like an evil mayor. <laughs> no, I, no, I like that part. A misguided. Well, and he's they've his family's been through a lot of shit, as we're gonna learn. Yeah. Like there's there's like meat to chew on in this movie, yeah. which was weird. There's like, oh shit, I feel something, and I'm watching a mobile movie. What the fuck? Is and you guys, you guys know I love me a good mayor in a movie. And oh, this yeah. this is Can't a top enough. tier mayor for me. I yeah. mean, ultimately Body how he mayor. goes out, um, I think was the one of the dumbest decisions I've ever seen in a film. But when he comes back, I'm like, well. 
I can't yeah. understand. Changes yeah. the whole thing. Hey, yeah. you can't yeah, get there yeah. without the other part. Yeah. Changes I, the I, whole, <laughs> whole thing. The I wish I had a bug thing. daddy. <laughs> what does anyway, that mean? Uh, I don't know. We're just going to leave that to imagination, folks, because the mayor is stonewalling him, refusing to give him the loan. Uh, he literally tells him, Sai, go away. <laughs> He leaves um, outside. Richard and Beth have arrived and they agree to meet up later that night. Um, she grabs her bags and heads inside of the house. Um, once she's in there, she walks around a bit. She's just slow walking, seeing the living room, the dining room. There's a hallway. And then she finds her dad in her in his office in the back. And he's just like looking through books and I, I just I got to find my papers and I got to do this and I need to. Oh, I got a pencil. And he's just doing a bunch of I don't know. He's it's like they were just like, hey, Richard, could you just like look busy? Thanks. Just do whatever yeah. you want. We got books, papers, pens, do whatever you need to look busy. So he's just like flipping through and he's like looking at this page, looking at that page. He'll mark something. It's fine. It's weird. Um, but he just keeps working and doesn't really acknowledge her. Um, until she says, you look so old and he likes drops what he's doing and walks over and like very tearfully says, you're what I wanted for my birthday and hugs her. I honestly thought this was like a dementia thing. Cause like that was so confusing. Yeah. And I wasn't I, well, sure. I thought what... she said I've gotten older or something like that. So I thought then he it clicked like, Oh, that's his daughter. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah, weird. I don't know. I mean, are they're... they, there's a lot of scenes where we're watching characters walk into something and then somebody follows them in and then people just stare at stuff and then someone strikes a conversation up the pacing is so bizarre i didn't understand it it's strange (laughs) um but that's that's all we see from them here for a bit uh richard has gone to the lighthouse and he calls millie um who's his like dispatcher Telling her that uh, Roger isn't there. Roger's the guy that they're looking for. The kid, I, I don't think we ever know how old he is. It, the way they talk about him made me feel like he's like a teenager. Yeah, they call him the Gordon boy later on. So yeah, was, oh, yeah, the, that, that Gordon boy. <laughs> um, but he's not there. Choose. Roger Gordon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding. <laughs> um, uh, she tells him he's got five more dog complaints since this morning. There's a bunch of dogs barking and being shits uh, all over the island. So he goes to check him out. He's going, all right, fine. I'll go, I'll go make the rounds. Um, but as he's getting into the car, he hears a strange like sound. Um, and he, he's like investigating, trying to figure out where it is. And it leads him down this staircase to um, like the beach, basically. And Wait, he's is about this what we're going to talk about the sound. I got a lot to say about the sound. <laughs> Do well, let me, let me just fit it. Let me, uh, <laughs> it, it, it ends up being shaky Joe who goes, ah, and like gets him <laughs> and like just I spooks love. him for some fucking reason. I love, that shaky mind, Joe. I, I love that Trevor's mind cannot it just automatically it thinks Joe. Shaky Joe instead of sh- yeah. Shaky Jake. I like oh, the Jake. Psychology. Shaky Jake, god damn it. I love the psychology behind it. The weird, disgusting <laughs> guy character living in the fucking in the dump. <laughs> Shaky Joe. And I'm looking at my notes and I have it written Jake. Jake, 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 Jake. But I can't. <laughs> Shaky Joe is just such it just rolls off the tongue. It does. But Shaky Joe's there. JT. She he uh spooks him. Tyler, what's your gripe <sighs> about this fucking sound? Well, first of all, I don't like the sound. Two, same. I, I don't like that it's always in stereo, yeah. so it's like it's around you whenever you're in the scene. But then, as the movie goes on, pulls you like the, the first couple times, you get big moments with the sound where the characters are reacting directly to the sound. Oh, uh, Trevor was waving to you. Oh. <laughs> got, got a water delivery. Um, nope. But then later Very on good. in the movie, like there's uh, there's a specific scene with Beth where she's like digging around and stuff, and you hear the. And she's not mm-hmm. reacting. Oh, it's like when she's finding the Monopoly board. Yes. And it's like, yes. So so either they can they hear this or they can't hear this. And, and then also, why is one bug like the sound of an engine starting? Like, I, it's the same volume, whether it's one or a thousand. And so it just drove me nuts. And again, my, my really my argument is I wish that the bugs were just one every now and again in the background. Like, it's something that you would have to look for to see. But, you know, that's that's not what they did. Ain't that kind of movie? <laughs> um. Oh, where am I? Oh, uh, Jake startles him. Um, and it turns out that Jake has stolen a boat. 
<laughs> he's just there on the beach. And he's like, how about you go take that back today? You return it today. And Jake says, I'll take it back today. And old timey, like vaudeville style. Uh, he, he's like an old timey actor. <laughs> I really liked his delivery. <laughs> this guy. Um, uh, and then Jake has uh, a, just out of the blue asked him. So you're going to marry my daughter. <laughs> and like full house music starts to play. And uh, uh, Richard replies, well, I like her, Jake. And they so share even a knowing though never smile. Really see that. Yeah. Good they, answer for me. Yep. They share a knowing <laughs> smile. And that's the end of my, yeah, Hulk, my section. <laughs> the hook came into frame and pulled Jake right out of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. And that's something we'll get to later on too, uh, is, is Richard and, and Lillian and how dirty Lillian is done. I believe. Yeah. By she's ugh. yeah. I mean, she's like, dirty. I know it's she bad. was just a plot device and it, a way to bring some minor romantic tension in, but I did like the scene when Beth goes to the diner and it's like, this is a hard turn where she's yeah. just like, well, I've been here the whole fucking time, and he's the yeah. only piece of meat worth fucking. Get out of here! Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you know, I'm 47, I, and I serve broken eggs to dumb people. No, she, and you she's went to on, college. She's on the 40 side of 30, Joe. Yeah, and it's John oh, okay. Ritter's ex-wife. Yeah, married to John Ritter for like 19 years or something. I think they're married at the time, so you know that John Ritter, you know, watched this movie in the theater. Probably. John Ritter may have visited the set. Even <laughs> you know, mm. he had to hear about the bug movie his wife was making. That's right. Was- that's 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 all the movies I'm going to do is is like uh, comedy actors' wives. Yeah, Dan Aykroyd, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. John well, Ritter. Been on the oh, I want to see. I want to see a movie I'm, where Trevi Chase's wife is in it. I'm Carmen Trevi Trace. Trace. Trevi Chase. Trevi Chase. <laughs> Trevi Trace. That's me, buddy. All right. I'm on Norco. I can't speak well. All right. I know you're. Well, how do you explain high. before the, the, what did you just say? Norco? Norco? Yeah. Norco. Now, Joe, Joe, you ain't yeah, vaping Norco. still, are you? No, oh, I'm sure. No, no, no. I'm not high right now. I don't, no, but I'm just talking in general because with your lungs compromised, you should yes. not be vaping. That's a good point. No, I've been doing edibles. I've been, that's how I've been getting high. <laughs> I mean, that's sure. That's fine. I get, I mean, that's not fine, <laughs> but that is, I like, I, I really appreciate that you were like, you know what? No, I have to switch to this because yeah. yeah. if I keep doing this, this is going to be bad. Like this isn't, this isn't better. Would have been great if you were eating vegetables and fruits while your body yeah. needs to recover. <laughs> yeah. Some- How about that? <laughs> Would have well, been great if his right. jaw were wired shut and uh, he had to find <laughs> a new way to get high. Oh. A liquid diet. No, yeah. it's through my it ass. Would, I put the marijuana yep, on my ass. ass. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> suppositories. You Mama, your- I, I need my my suppos- my weed suppository. You put your butthole around the top of a bong and you try to like. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> the glass shatters. One it. man, one bong. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> all the smoke comes out of it. It burns. Him. Yeah. Ah, it comes back out. Yeah, I, I thought you had to take the bong up to the base to get really high. So I, I, <laughs> that was just a misunderstanding. Oh, Joe God. sits Who's down and it? <laughs> Well, no, no. I mean, mar- marijuana is a healthy, natural okay. medicine. I think it's Nick, is perfectly it you next, fine. Nick? I guess so. It's Nick. Okay. Here's Nick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if, if this continues for the rest of the film, but this section in particular feels like it has a level of uh, cutting to shit back and forth that is usually reserved for like the the last twenty five percent of these movies. So uh, no, no, don't we worry, get we, we get that in my part a lot. Too. Yeah, it's mine all is over. Well. Mine is yeah, well. uh, that's just the whole movie. Yeah, <laughs> I think well, the beginning uh, is the only part that doesn't have that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Beth enters uh, a bedroom and starts examining it real hard uh, and asks what happened to Mom's shell collection. Uh, and Dad says he put it in the basement. And that he's sorry that he couldn't help her more. And I didn't know if he meant his mom or her or what. I don't know what does I can't remember what disease mom had, but I mean what could you have done? She didn't have a disease. Wait, what? We find out later. Yeah, she died of she died of an overdose. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. She, Maybe she she had something and was taking something. I don't well, know. Well, sure. Yeah. But she, she writes how, a note. She leaves she, a note. Yeah. Well, dad really dropped the ball um so and dad doesn't want to lose her beth again uh they hug um and then beth how goes would you rate that her, hug nick um pretty sensual a, a four you're not on the scale you're... yeah um <laughs> is it a malevolent or a benevolent hug yeah 
on a scale of malevolent to benevolent. Well, at this point in the Definitely movie, I think malevolent. you're supposed to see think slightly malevolent because you don't know how who Dad is yet. You don't really know. Yeah, him. I don't That's care true. for him at this point. No, I could do without him. This is a great curmudgeon. I yeah. this is oh, a good yeah. curmudgeon oh, actor. Oh, he's, hum, he's humbugging all over. He yeah. sure is, and I love watching him. Yeah, oh, he's this great. Is a, it's yeah, this uh, is a um, Robert Lansing, the dude's yes. been in a million like. Twilight Zone. He was in the Star mm. Trek backdoor pilot that was supposed to be a TV show where he's got the the cat. I mean, he pops up in seventies movie. I mean, this dude is as a professional fucking actor. Well, while we're and talking about actors, love this guy. I he know I've seen Frank from somewhere, and it's not Star Trek. Um, but what what is what is Frank's like next biggest movie? Frank. Who, Frank. Frank is um uh the sheriff. Frank Luz. Oh, oh. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. He does look, he looks a lot like, um, I've seen him. Somewhere. Vincent Spano, the actor, Vincent Spano. And that's what I always think in, uh, in my mind, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that I've seen him in. Okay. But so he's I'm looking yeah, through his IMDb just, and there's nothing that like sticks out to me, but I know you know, he's, he's fine. I don't know why, unless he chose, not, I mean, he's not a bad actor. He's a handsome dude. I don't know. You he hasn't know, acted should've... in shit fucking since 99 years. Yeah. yeah. He's on Baywatch Jag. Silk mm. stockings, oh. Walker, Texas Ranger. There you go. Um, he so is anyway. in an episode of Star Trek. Yeah, and like uh, I, he's in I, an episode of TNG called the Host. Oh, he's in the Host in ninety one. Okay, I know yeah, that. Yeah, he when you see his because I can't remember the name of the alien he's playing, but when you see him, it's like, oh yeah, that's that guy. It's yeah, that's him. Uh, when Harry met Sally, was he in trouble? The one, yeah, the one Star, Star Trek, Trek thing. Trek. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, he's this dude. <laughs> there he is with the weird fucking eyebrow. Anyway, all it's right. the guy. I like when yeah. we just talk about Star Trek or Star yeah. Wars or Lord of the Rings. It's like the best part of this show. Yeah, for yeah. me. Let's, Lord, do fun, a, at least. let's do a different podcast. He's 70 um, years old right now. No, Nick. <laughs> what? No. He's yeah. Star Wars, the the it new won't... podcast it's called. It, like Star the new Wars. Star Wars, colon, the new podcast. No, it won't be as fun if that's all we talk about. Uh, yeah. All right, Nick, come on. Okay, Beth is the first ooh. roll. The, wait, 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 wait. The podcast what? strikes back. Very good. Yes, the Revenge of the well, Podcast. Yeah, to keep thinking on it, Joe. Find a way to merge Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But hit us up but, at the end of the episode with your best but one. But yeah, oh, take a long room. time to figure it out. Okay, um, I'll keep thinking. So Beth is out for a stroll and she sees a camper that's uh, just sitting there and she starts to approach it. And then a, a leash dog jumps, jumps at her and starts barking at her. Uh, and then we move on. What, um, what, what does the sign say next to the it's you see it later? Well, I don't know if, if there's there is one. I think it's Galaxy on, Homes. It says there's Galaxy one, Homes. Th- is that what it says? It's the one right next to the trailer. Oh, I was yeah, able to pause know. it. There's one on there. I think that says like Intech something. Um, oh yeah, like, yeah. This is like around. an Intech. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but mobile. Yeah, this is the base. Intech dog. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> she starts wandering further out. Then we cut back to the dog, and the dog hears something. He hears that same sound. Uh, yeah, the I don't know lawnmower whatever sound. Um, but then back to Beth. Uh, she's contemplating trespassing, even though the signs explicitly says not to. Uh, well, she, she says doesn't. something weird, like, well, when did that happen? Or, yeah, or like, since well, when can I not property, go here? Since when? Like, yeah. well, um, as she, I guess she goes out there all the time. Um, but the the noise, we go back to the dog, and the noise is getting closer. And then back at Beth, we hear the dog scream out in the distance. Uh, so she goes back, and uh-oh, the dog is dead. It well, looks like it's looks like it's been skinned alive and it's I, covered in seeds. I was very put off. There's a shot where you, you get the nervous dog as the thing approaches. It's like a, you know, camera going through the grass type deal. But there's a shot of this dog like struggling to get away from something. And it looks like it's choking the shit out of itself. Like, was there any safe way that that happened? Or there's a similar thing with with a cat with later cat. on. We're like, yeah, it, I'm pretty but that sure that looked like a puppet. That looked like a puppet well, no, to no, me. No, the no, cat. The there's a real oh, cat. Yeah. Yeah. Cat's cat. real. Uh, the commentary on the Blu-ray because I because when the cat thing bothered me the first time I watched this uh, like eight nine years ago on the commentary the director during the scene of the cat directly talks about it he says look I've gotten shit for years about the cat thing the cat was fine that was red water that we're spraying with the cat was just pissed 
you know, oh, still yeah. not a great habit. But sure, it, it wasn't. It's dangerous. easy to make a cat pissed. He's, he's like that, but there was just an angry cat, and it was somebody yeah. somebody's pet on the set. So they brought in their little cat, and okay. So, but yeah, he's like people for years and, you know, I've thought that that was, you know, a real cat being hurt or something. And I just think it's funny that on the commentary, he actually had to address it. So we're not Let's the first. Let's put this thing to bed. <laughs> to be like, e. Yeah. So we find the dog. It's covered in seeds. Uh, then Jake just shows up out of nowhere. Or no, not Jake. Richard, because his name isn't Jake. But for some reason, I got it mixed up. I'm going to keep doing that. Richard Tarbell. Yeah, Tarbell. Richard Tarbell. Uh, he. Then they go to her house and, and dad ask what it was. Uh, and then he says to kind of hold off on, on looking it up because uh, there's some stuff going on with Intec and on that land. Yeah. Uh, Cause um, who's Simpson? Is that he's Homer? a character? I thought it was Homer. I was so hoping that it was Homer. Um, it's a character that is a hunter and he's never seen. He's yeah. referenced. He's like the local tracker hunter because they want, they talk later on too. Well, Simpson's going to go track this blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, because Richard, I think Richard brings it up then. He's like, I'm going to send him up there. And and uh, Daddy Mayor's like, well, hold on now. Yeah, Let I was hoping that that was Homer's minute. last name. But his last name is, he does say his last name later on when he's talking about his concoction that he made. And he's bragging to himself. But interestingly, nobody but talks about... So the mayor says, don't, don't send Simpson, don't send Simpson. But Richard, my first thought would be, all right, then I'm going to fucking Intech. I'm just going to go to Intech because they established that there's an Intech place. So just go there and say, hey, there's something that's eating dog skin. Like, <laughs> out this, there. Is, this is the 80s. You send exactly one scientist to your, to the, <laughs> to the problem. Well, it also um, kind of shows tiny. the power, you know, that Elias holds over everybody. And, you know, their history. Of, I'm, I think Richard is, is intimidated because one, that was his ex-girlfriend's dad. So yeah. he was intimidated on that level. Plus, now that he's the sheriff, uh, you know, I think that's that was just to show that, look, the guy making the rules, whether you're the law or not, there's one guy making the rules. And it's and it's a lot. <laughs> there just needed to be a scene where they're they're talking about, like, the the evacuation and all this really heavy stuff and Elias is just like you know no 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 <laughs> and Richard's just like I don't get it this is for the best interest of the Islanders and he says well you fucked my daughter I was there <laughs> and then you get that vivid flashback to prom night and he opens the door mm -hmm. and he sees Richard on his daughter I know what happened oh. I know what you Back kids off. do Pack off the mic Which okay. of slapping each other God, he Come on, Joe, Joe. Joe got some salami breath on it, and then he smelled it, and it smelled good, and he wanted to take a, a quick <laughs> nibble of it. We constantly hear <laughs> it's just him licking the the, the tip. Mm. How many licks to get at the center of a Yeti, Joe? I believe it's thirty nine. Well, well not, how many did you get to the center of a Becker? One. Uh, I'm not going to answer that, but uh, <laughs> let me just say this: uh, it's I'm sure, I'm sure Ted zero finishes one. quick. God, no. Nick, do you still have to talk or yeah, does somebody I'd, else have I'd to like talk? I'd like to. All right, go uh, so for they it. go for a walk and Jake tells her oh. uh, what her dad is doing with the development or something. And then there's this weird cut where we cut to like outside the house and we hear the dad's phone conversation. Uh, he's kind of downplaying it. I don't know what he said. Describe but it, Nick, because we get a shot of the side of the house and there's one lit window and a shadow walking back and forth. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. That's the 80s, baby. They played it up. Uh, it Alfred Hitchcock to, to he's walk holding, in. He's holding the, what the fuck is that thing? The the base of the phone in one hand. Yeah. He's got the phone. You can see it all in the shadow. Peak I love it. 80s dad losing yeah. his mind on the phone. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know why we needed a cut to that, but... Uh, Anyway, back into the other thing. Um, Jake and Beth talk about when she left and she didn't want to be treated like a kid and she needed to be separated from her dad. Uh, so that's why she took off. Uh, Has and, her dad been mayor like since then, like this whole time? Well, you're mayor once, you're mayor for life. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Maybe that's on an rules. island of 700 people, if you do a good job, I mean, who else? Yeah. Well, shit, Prince it's not like Shaky Jake is going to get elected. Like 15 years. Yeah. Ryan, come back and run for mayor. Um, I want to. I would one day, one day, I will be a mayor. I've been we'll saying that for years. Mayor those campaign Ridge. videos. Oh, yeah, please. We, uh, yeah. The, um, uh, so Ryan Matthew Ziegler, he came back and destroyed the scourge that is Joseph Robert <laughs> Buckley. Mm -hmm. Ryan Matthew Ziegler, you'll never find a hotter mayor. 
Okay. There it is. That's, that's yeah. the campaign. Joe, you can run the campaign. Okay, God thank you. God damn it, I got beat out. Fuck you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan I got, Matthew Ziegler, a mayor dead. oozing with sexual energy. For Grand Ridge, if I run for mayor of, of a bigger community, uh, then yes, Tyler's got to get involved. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay. If it's Joe Ridge, to be in the Grand background. Ridge is a practice, ma- practice mayorship. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> can you get can you get elected mayor in multiple cities and then like you just consolidate them and, and Ryan's reach just keeps growing? <laughs> the Ziggler Empire. Yeah, there's yeah. no rule. The uh, sun never sets on the Ziggler the Empire. Galactic Empire. The Galactic Empire. Unlimited right. power. <laughs> I, 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 I. Oh, brother! He's just electrocuting himself with the <laughs> yeah. Grand <Ridge> power <laughs> supply. <laughs> Keeps aging. Oh, and you can be that make size him stop. Please. All right, Nick. What okay. happens next? <laughs> See, it's, start, it's more fun to talk about. So we're over at Jaeger's junkyard, and uh our our old friend uh Shaky Jake comes out and he's now an old timey prospector. Yeah. Uh, and he's and he's shooting a gun at rats. Uh <laughs> and it's so, like a, it's like one of those old like bolt action rifles. Yeah. <laughs> like and, the 1800s. So he so he is in like long pajamas. Like he's that's yeah, he's definitely looking very prospectory and all, sounding he's sounding just good. like one too. Yeah. Um uh but <laughs> he's he's taking shots at the rats, but uh oh, there's something uh, we don't know if it's bigger, but something more frightening than a rat because we see a rat and it, it ain't no rat. Well, whenever um, I'll let you, I'll just say this. Whenever I saw the rat on the screen, I pissed and shit my pants the second I saw it. So that was that. pretty frightening. Well, Nothing you see the, the rat just like he's shooting at the rat and the rat kind of scurries under a bunch of shit. But then something gets like thrown back over and it's done in two shots. The first shot is just like it looks like, oh, like uh, the the ass of the rat or something. It just looks like a like a fuzzy, furry, bloody thing. But then they cut to a close up, and it's no, it's the top half of the rat. It's yeah. like I don't, I don't remember if its little arms are there too, but its head is like, eh, man. yeah, it's in half. The top half and it's wiggling. Yeah. yeah. So something munched its butt. Yeah. So so uh, Jake sees this and he runs inside and I guess tries to hide under some blankets. Uh, but he, but whatever it is, uh, he gets devoured. Uh, and... and that's what I just didn't get, buddy. Yeah. He he. This is such a sad man. He ran into his tent. He threw some bread out. Like, oh, just take the bread, and then hides <laughs> under his blanket. Like he's like he's like, like a very he's a childish man. Maybe I there's, liked him there's so more much. Going. I know yeah. my favorite yeah. character. I wish he would have come back, even as a know. bug. I felt guilty even having to describe his death in my book. <laughs> um, Pour one out for Yeg or J- yeah, he was shaking Yeager, during Jay. the eating too. Wasn't good. Well, his whole uh, his whole arm fell off, and the roaches drug away his arm. I didn't get that. The arm does cr- like it. The arm's not of its own momentum. Something's pulling it, but you don't see anything. The, this his death is kind of disjointed. Like it feels like there's a lot of weird cuts and stuff, and they just did it. Any chance uh, that there's missing footage to make a cut or something? Uh, or is this is po- is this pre or post Gremlins? I was post Gremlins by a couple of years. Yeah, post Gremlins world. I don't know. Maybe maybe the MPAA got their dirty hands on it. Yeah, I think they just were like it's anyway. clean hands, right? Another one of your vendettas. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so now we're, now we're at Jake's. It's the next morning. Uh, not Jake. God damn it! What the fuck is his name? Steve Richard. Richard. Richard <laughs> whatever the fuck. Dick. Uh, he goes outside and he runs into Homer, who's who's going by on his scooter, and he he's begging him to to spray his house. Uh, but Homer doesn't have time, so he just gives him some poison. Uh, then we go to the cafe and you can hear a little bit of chit chat by the locals and they're talking about a dead dog. Uh, so I guess the same one we, well, I don't know. There's multiple dead dogs have been referenced so far. So who knows? Um, and the, the cook, uh, approaches to talk to Richard. Is that his name? No, that's what I called him because of his fucking hat. Uh, Yeah. Uh, well, I I, I like this part just concerned me for him because he, he approaches to talk to Richard and then the, the waitress, whatever her name violently rips a blade out of his hand that he's using to cut like a piece of vegetable, like while he's doing it. And like, I'm surprised he did not get lacerated that it seemed very irresponsible to do that. Um, of all the things for Nick to pick up on. (laughs) Oh, it just, it just, (laughs) nice safety. Yes. It's, I take it very seriously guys. 
uh, cut, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Um, <laughs> but uh, Richard gets a, I think he gets a beep uh, and he's got to go. Uh, and then we see that a doctor has arrived on the island. This is somewhere else, by the way. A doctor has arrived on the island and is met by the mayor. And I think that's it. The, uh, the doctor shows up here. She shows up by plane because it's an island. Uh, and like the mayor, I, I do like that the mayor looks like the actor was on lunch break because yeah, he's, there, he's, like he's like a eating a piece of pizza. He's eating like, <laughs> like, but he doesn't finish his crust. He's like, oh, here she comes. And then he like wraps it in a, uh, a napkin and then like wipes his hands off and greets her. And you could tell. I Well, hold on a second. Had, yeah. I, it, it is established throughout this movie. This is a very involved mayor. Like right. if something happens, he's in the thick of it. Like, yeah, this guy, he it looks like he doesn't cat. live at home. He's just out and about. Right. I mean, he probably hasn't used his dining room since he became mayor. Because well, every time his he, wife like, passed. Well, anything happens, he's got to get there. He's got, he eats yep. on the run. Um, he's out there unclogging drains in the street. <laughs> yes, constantly. <laughs> um, and so the doctor shows up and she's got her hair up. She's got these big earrings. She's like, she's very done up. Like you get vibes off her right away. I like it was I Linda know. Carter for like the first 10 minutes of her <laughs> being on screen. Um, and so what I love here is so the, so the doctor starts talking with the mayor and the mayor, he's got his thinking glasses on and the sheriff rolls up and he pulls out this thermos, like this massive thermos. Cause again, he's a busy boy. Got to eat on the run as well. But like, as someone who is not a thermos man, do you typically offer someone a quick swig out of your thermos? Uh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I, think, uh... I think it would depend on what it is because we just saw the mayor eating. If if, yeah, that's right. a, if that's a thing of soup, maybe I would offer you guys a little bit of chicken noodle. I would but appreciate it. I will say bowl. that was a little bit of, of world building, character building that I enjoyed when he when because when um the sheriff shows up to the diner, he hands uh what's her name um Lillian, yeah Jake's daughter Lillian um his thermos and you expect her to take it go fill it up with coffee or something but instead she cha- and ch- exchanges it for one that's already yeah. filled. So yeah. they have this process where it's like, okay, we they do see each other daily, it looks like. It's a yeah. program. I, ju- I just yeah. wish that we would have gotten a scene with those two. Off the exchange program. It's oh. like, yeah, it's like the Lillian's bucket awesome. for popcorn. Yeah, I agree. Lillian's Ooh, a catch. Yes. yes. Well, I, 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 told, I turned to Lisa and I said, hey, I think Lillian's a little bit better looking than Beth. But then Lisa Ooh. just laying there on her back, barely trying to pay attention. is just like, too tan. <laughs> She's too tan. I agree. <laughs> I agree with Lisa. I don't know. It's an island. <laughs> so, so Ryan, she's in the diner. you and i can oh. reach out to her uh, right. we'll, we'll take yeah. her on a double date it's an item oh. and, I, what is she 80 really? now yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a, she's, age ain't nothing but a number right right well, her son's yeah you know, what's that <laughs> <laughs> no but keep going it's funny okay. that you didn't hear <laughs> okay <laughs> now you got another reason to listen yeah so uh <laughs> so the sheriff meets the doctor they're hanging out they're doing a little talking about everything that's been going on and then they gift the doctor uh the dead dog and she is over the moon she is more she is like the nintendo 64 kid that she is oh, being yeah. gifted this dog yeah. um, dead and- dog carcass oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah! She stands up. Yes! Oh my god his ribs are out i'm so happy <laughs> yeah i will and, say uh, though when that rib is plucked from that yeah. dog, I wanted so ribs. Gross. I immediately wanted to get some ribs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> they've got the bugs in this. They do have good uh, taste. And Side so, note, mm-hmm. I did know a guy um, that ate both oh, dog no. and cat. Uh, he was a, uh, in his young, younger years, I knew him when he was an older man. In his younger years, he was a culinary student. I don't know if he was in France. He was in, in some other country. And part of the curriculum was to try all these dishes. And one day he tried dog and one day he tried cat. He said cat was delicious because cats constantly drink mm. water. And so the, they're always hydrated. But he says dog was gamey and he wouldn't recommend Okay. It. Okay. Well, good to know, I guess. <laughs> Should the apocalypse come, I got two you know, nice little the, meal cats walking around. Cats. Go yeah, cat. yeah. I can't. I can't wait for McDonald's to just start serving up dog. That's gonna be a wonderful day. They already are. What do you think of those chicken nuggets? Yeah, yeah. Um. So, I. Uh, what is it, Miss Hub? 
Miss Hubbard, Morgan. Do- Dr. Morgan Hubbard, yeah, Dr. Dr. Morgan Hubbard. Hubbard. Uh, her her love of this dead dog does uh, intrigue weird. our sheriff because he immediately is like, "Hey, I'm gonna leave you to it," and he like runs to his car and immediately pulls up on the mic. He's like, "Hey, uh, we probably want to maybe look into Intech Corp, huh? Like, why? What's going on here? Because this lady's not just here to help us; she's here for some other reason." This lady's really looking at this dead dog. Like yeah. she's got like goo goo eyes looking at it. Yeah, goo-goo. exactly. <laughs> um, Girl, I got goo goo eyes for you. <laughs> yeah. You telling me there's a dead dog in your car? Hell yeah, I'll go for a ride. <laughs> and so um, there is a, he gets a call to go to the market because something's happening down in the market. So, so he heads out. And he gets there, and all the steaks have been eaten up. We, as the audience, know they've been eaten up by bugs, but they have no idea. Did you say and, steaks? Yeah, they're steaks. Are they yeah. said sticks? No, <laughs> like, steaks. Yeah. All right, they're eating the trees too. Okay, yeah, just a bunch of corn dogs. They love battered wiener. <laughs> <laughs> just like Joe. So yeah, oh, no. was, the more the around. better. That's right. <laughs> battered. Oh, so, you're. Is your never mind? Is your no? Is is your well, Jake? Because he was first off. I know what you're going to ask, and he was fully erect right before the crash. So yes, <laughs> it's bruised. Uh, Joe, Joe cause... was self sucking while he was driving. Oh god, right. yeah. Is mm-hmm. your is your is your special is your swimsuit area okay? Let me tell you, my penis was probably the one of the only parts of my body that didn't get damaged. It's all know. functional. No, the, no. the EMTs yeah, the are getting was the last thing to hit the ground. The EMTs no, are no. picking him up. Like <laughs> we can't get him out of this car. He's his, his boner won't budge. Uh, he's too <laughs> hard. Yeah. It was like the it was like the thing that they used to uh, <laughs> keep you on a roller coaster. Yeah. His class in a place <laughs> before he gets in a car. <laughs> well, that's what that's what kept me so safe. Is my wiener is so large and it was yeah. so hard. Right. It yeah. was. Stuck. It, it was yeah. it was no it deployed it. like an something. airbag. That's what uh-huh. happened. But it's, uh-huh. it's, it's stuck against the skin. steering wheel and kept me safe. Uh, uh, skin, a, so it just he, he pulled himself out of the dish using it as like a winch and he wrapped it around the pole. He like twists his arm to get it pulled on. Yeah, no, my wiener's so hard that I was able to use it to saw through my car door. Okay, get myself out. Joe, Joe, wiener talk. Not that I, uh, not that I want you to take. I want you to take your accident seriously, as you should. That should be a life changing event. But yeah. did okay. you piss or shit yourself? <laughs> uh, no, no, I did not. No, I was really concerned about moving my neck. I thought it might be paralyzed. But uh, well, that's, no, I well, no, that's good. I'm glad yeah. you thought yeah, about that. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. What um, was the? Uh, yeah. What was the? <sighs> with the person who, who discovered you, right? Because somebody came up on you heard heard that yeah it was uh it was a farmer yeah it was a farmer and his wife did he just did he his wife did he stand up on the road just look down in the cornfield where you were laying and he's just like that's that buckley boy (laughs) yeah man (laughs) what what that goddamn buckley do to my corn he took out a good three dollars worth of corn but seriously what was the first thing they said to you uh, basically, they were just calling uh, the EMTs. Uh, they wanted to make sure I was okay. And uh, they talked then, to you. Though. Do you even they remember? Said, yeah, yeah. Like, were you out for a period of time? I would. No, imagine. I was. Uh, I was conscious the whole time. And uh, they. Uh, yeah, I couldn't remember any phone numbers except for my home phone number. So we were trying to call my mom to let her I'm just know glad that I was they didn't okay. Call me, Joe. Fucking hell. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm you surprised you don't remember see. my number. I figured so, you would. T- Tyler, you're no, the next of kin. You are the his benefactor, contact, beneficiary. Yeah. No, 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 no. In order yeah, to be I... next to kin, you got to be kin. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. He'd, he'd be my life partner. I thought Tad was. No, no, hey, no, no. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> so the... Sheriff's at the market and all the T-bones have been eaten up. And um, he says something. He says like, well, you guys have mice, right? And she's like, yeah. And I had that thought, but, and then she pulls up a cable that has been like chewed through. And she's like, but, and I don't know, this confused the hell out of me. Cause I'm like, yeah, mice chew cables. Like that's a thing. More frequently than bugs. <laughs> right. More, a lot more frequently. I well, would think. And that, that is such a, uh, like, that's a move you pull when you're setting up something big. Like yeah. that's there. There's always a they're bigger gonna cut fish the power. or whatever. Yeah. 
Like, like the lighthouse. Like, what if they chew through the cable to the lighthouse later? And that thing. Yeah, and not that I want to steal anybody's thunder, but like they posit something in this movie that is fucking awesome, which is bug hybrids. Right. And you only really get two, two to three. Yeah. You get a cat bug hybrid, a human bug hybrid, and, and then you kind of get like a, a multi-human queen hybrid. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, man. There's you're on an island. What kind of weird fucking shit is there? Is there like a fucking <laughs> yeah. barracuda that's a bug? Like, and and unfortunately, the, the really it's you have you have the skeletal structure of whatever the uh, original animal is, and then it has mandibles and antenna. It's like, yeah. man, you could have done some fucking cool ass shit with this. Well, I would need to get the Time rights for a to remake. The yeah, for a big budget remake. Oh, speaking of remakes, Those... there's a movie called They Nest. It made in like 2000. Is that really? No. I almost rented that. No, because it's that also is really an and an island. Yeah. So, Ooh, but I gross. Just, I don't really? like that that poster. That's icky. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of gross. Uh, but anyway, so uh, basically, they come to the conclusion that I don't know, could be anything. But I got to go. So then uh, we cut away, and the mayor and the doctor they're they're working on setting up a glass cage, um, with antennae on it, and uh. They decide to lure in a nearby kitty. Now, I don't think the kitty was the original plan. Oh, no. They're basically setting up what it looks like. It's kind of like a raccoon trap, but clear on all the sides. And she goes like she's going to put raw beef in there, but then she hears a little meow and a little kitty nearby. Uh, so she decides with zero, like not a single lick of um, objection from the mayor that we are going to use this cat for <laughs> this purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah, put the cat in the box. Well, there's so I, a- and I think that, again, one, they're, they're establishing that this woman is potentially a fucking psychotic monster. Yes. And we still don't know where the mayor lands. And I, I liked that. I like the mayor part because it's like, that is something that like, ooh, that's fucked up. And hey, maybe this is a mayor who's like, I care about my island. Like, I've got to keep this fucking thing under wraps. I don't know if the intech money is still worth it or not. I've got to see this thing through to the, I already sold my soul. So I'm going in on it. I, yeah. I liked it. It's fucked up, but I liked it. And he well, does he does show some some once the the animal starts being eaten uh, yeah. as it were by the bugs, he does show some like Jesus fucking Christ. Like if he has a, he does show in that moment like this is fucked. But I mean, yeah, I, he's too far for in. me he's just like he a lot of time he's just kind of looking on. Like he doesn't say much, he doesn't do much. He's just kind of chilling. He gets disgruntled that it's taking a long time for the bugs to show up. Um but when he's sitting there, like, he's just like, oh, man, is this actually going to happen or what? And then, you know, right, right on cue, we get the, the you know, uh, POV shot. The bugs are coming. We get the noise. Uh, they're on their way. And again, like Tyler mentioned this a couple of times. is like, do they hear the sound? Because he doesn't seem to react until he hears the ruffling of the, the grass. You know, they come lurking out of the tall grass. Um and the bugs approach. The doc opens the door to the cage uh, to let the bugs get in and do their thing to get the cat. And uh, this is the there, there is like so. There's a scene where the cat is just surrounded by. It looks like it's surrounded by raisins, but there's like a lot of blood in there, and it's clearly fake and everything. But that is a real cat that like is clearly pissed. Like it's not being tased or anything, but it is furious and yeah. like it's so weird to me that someone like would be willing to bring their because you said it was someone's pet right right i think that's what he says in the commentary but he was uh, <laughs> or or it was his cat maybe even but i i don't know if it was a cat that they got professionally they did yeah. have wranglers uh i read anyway online that they did have wranglers for the cockroaches and there was they got loose and people were stepping on them they're like no 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 don't do that um <laughs> but um uh, yeah i think that the cat thing it's funny the the like like I said, like the director brought up in the commentary because this has been a point of contention for him. Everybody has been like, oh, that's a little much because yeah. it is a real cat. And you yeah. can tell the cat's under uh, in distress. Yes. You know, and it's, I, I wouldn't do it. Uh, no. I was directing, nor would I let my cat, well, it depends on which cat it was, some days, maybe. But uh, yeah. <laughs> go through that fear. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but like, you know, well, there are some days where I'm like, this yeah. fucker. I'll spray you with some oh, red yeah. shit. Yeah. Shave your ass, boy. Get the fuck out of here. Most of the time, I, you know, I, I don't want him to be irritated, even for a movie's sake. But yeah, 
but I do think it's funny. So like you said, so, so she's looking at this cat. She's loving every second of this cat getting eaten by bugs. And the mayor does at first, he kind of like furrows his brow, but it quickly transitioned to like, in my opinion, like his face tells me he doesn't remember if the new England Patriots game is at seven o'clock tonight or tomorrow. Like it's, he's not thinking about the cat being eaten alive. He's just like thinking about other shit. He's like, ah, I got other, I got bigger fish to fry, you know? And I don't know why that like, he never seems that worried about this clear psychopath standing right next to him. Like not until pretty later, uh, actually in the next scene. So there's a jump cut and we are now in, this is, I believe the, um, yeah, the lighthouse laboratory and doc's getting incredibly horny about these bugs, uh, like too horny for comfort. And the mayor shows a little bit of concern here. Um, and we see the dead body of the cat now still being cleaned up by these cockroaches. They're still going to town. Um, also, I think the mayor did change, <laughs> like he changed his shirt. So he went from like this button up shirt to like nighttime cozy mayor. And he's wearing like a sweater or like a fisherman's vest or uh, <laughs> a sweater. It's nice. It's a good look. I just don't know. <laughs> Must be cool. There's a lot of there. costume changes. Uh, his daughter so too changes her clothes a lot in that first day that she's on the Island. Well, and so does like even the doctor, like, so she goes from this like yellow, like what she arrived in when they're at the thing, we assume there's been a time jump because he's in this like nice sweater and she's wearing a, like a whole different ensemble. She's got like blue and gray on. Yeah. Um, so again, the, the mayor does start to show a little concern more or less for the Island than anything else. He's just like, all right, Hey, get to the point. Are we going to be able to fix this or not? And she's like, Hey, don't worry about it. And she's just like longingly looks at these bugs. Don't worry about it. Hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> Look at these bugs eating this cat. She's she loves it. <laughs> she really is horny about this. Oh yeah. Um, we get back to the diner, and Homer is is doing a little bit of vacuuming, and uh, decides now he, he he like snaps a little bit, um, because what? Who's the diner girl? Uh, Lillian. Uh, Lillian. 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 Uh, she calls him an exterminator, and he says, "Hey, first off, I'm not an exterminator." A pest control agent. He's like, we can't, I can't exterminate an entire species. Like he's, he's at the end of his rope here. I think he's annoyed because like everyone's being like, Hey, fix this problem. And he's just like, Hey, I'm just a, I can only do so much. Um, and, uh, similarly to the last scene, we almost get a cat fight here. Um, because now, uh, the daughter, what's her name? Uh, Beth, yeah. she comes in, uh, and she's looking for the sheriff. And she comes in and this room. We get this like scene. Homer's like, I'm, I'm out of here. And Lillian's like, sit your ass down and get rid of my bugs. And then she gives it to Beth straight up. She's like, look, this, this hunk that lives in our town is the only good thing going for this whole Island. And you come here and he won't come over here anymore. And let me refill his thermos. And yeah, like, refill his thermos. Refill his thermos. Uh, and she does. I do like the line. She says, "When you're not around, the one man worth crossing the street for comes to see me." Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, line. yeah. Uh, and she is snarky. She's you pissed. know she, the moment she heard Beth was on the island, she was Ooh, thinking of that line. She's fuming. Every plane that comes into the island, she's like, "Oh, I swear, Beth's on there." Like she's <laughs> got to be pissed. Um, but at the it, same time, at least for me, it didn't it didn't turn me off from the character of Lillian. No, I no, still no. liked her because I get it. I totally yeah. get. You know, uh, you know, here comes Beth walking into town, also the daughter of the mayor and everybody. And then she's just going to come in and screw up all of this relationship. It's very loving, it seems like. I mean, he's coming in to get the coffee and she takes yeah. care of him. Relationship. I totally, you know, I was, I, I like both characters. So I don't have a, I didn't pick one or the other, but I, I, I understand Lillian's point of view. She also doesn't like. Ryan, did something similar happen to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Two girls fighting over me now. <laughs> Well, she also like, what I like about it is that she's not necessarily like, she's obviously, she's not mad at Beth. She's mad at what's his name. Right. And she doesn't yeah. really take it. I mean, she's just stating facts here. She's like, look, like <laughs> it sucks that when you're here, the guy that I like won't come here. Like he's cause the guy says skis, he's a sleaze ball, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Richard's um, the asshole in this, in this yes, trial. Absolutely. Um, so let's see. So we cut back and the doctor's playing with bugs again. And she's got her hand in the, she's got like the rubber glove contraption into the box and she's letting the bugs climb all over her hands. And she's getting so <laughs> fucking horny. Like she is, I can't Jeez. imagine. I'm saying though, she has to have changed 
three or four times her, her lower half because she was just like loving this and <laughs> was fucking eating her hand. Well, so then she lets him climb up. She's there. a masochist. And the doctor and the, the mayor's like, hey, what's what's going on in there? She's like, they're biting my hand. And he's like, oh, take your hand out of there. And she's like, no yeah. way. I haven't climaxed yet, Elias. <laughs> exactly. She's wondering how many she could shove up. And so, like, the thing is, <laughs> then the mayor, like, yanks her hand out. She's super bloody, but she's loving it. Well, so she's- somebody somebody needs to help connect me to Dr. Hubbard here, because this, this was my biggest gripe with Halloween 2018, is we got a character who is just enamored with the subject that they study to the point yeah. that they are... It's like they want the chaos. Like they yeah. want, it's like, I will die for this. Like I want to see what will happen when it's unleashed. Yeah. And so like, I'm assuming this is a trope that's in, or a character type that's in other movies. Maybe it's just a mad scientist. I really, I just think it's a, it's the mad scientist trope. It's, so, it, I just don't, I can't buy it. Like how well, help me buy it. I want to get it. So this is something she helped create, right? Yeah. It's like her life's yeah. work. Cause later on in the movie, she's, you know, she's talking to herself so about like, look what I've done. It is, it is seriously just the mad scientist. And in this case, you know, it's, it's an attractive woman but instead of, you know, yeah. the normal, you know, crazy scientist kind of guy. And in the case of this movie, it's also, I think a little bit of a, a subverting of the expectations as far as the jaws kind of thing, because they do set up similar <clears throat> to the jaws, but in this case, the mayor is not a, not a complete asshole um and like he's in jaws and in this the scientist that they bring in is actually a psycho and not there to help you know so they do kind of switch that now does morgan by the end of it does morgan um does she switch or is she psycho to the end because i couldn't understand there's a there's a moment at the lighthouse where uh richard wants to get in touch with beth and and morgan lies and says no 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 no. i already talked with her she says she loves you she says everything's fine where she's at like but like, was that to keep them focused on getting the lighthouse working, which was part of the plan that everybody was in on? I couldn't understand what that was. Was it just she wants them to be focused on saving the day or somehow was she going to benefit from that? I couldn't understand. Her I never got the vibe confused. that she wanted it sprayed because it wouldn't have mattered. Well, you know, but her motives confused me because like if they spray, then all the bugs die. But she already says that the next evolution of bugs will be stronger. But then it seems like she wants them to like she wants them to fix the lighthouse so that they don't spray. But then the bugs are still going to keep evolving. Like there's really no. Does the queen did. I don't think it's said out loud, but like, is it established that if there's a queen, then that's what stops the evolving that stops the all that. Stuff? I don't think so, because she says that, like, if they get sprayed, that's all they do. Right. She said that if they get sprayed, their nests won't die and they will evolve past the point be of immune. being killed by this junk yeah yeah she doesn't care about the spray like she says whatever bro if you want to spray it that's fine it's not going to stop this it's yeah. too late so then so why does she help you just kill every because you kill all the people you know because they don't they don't get it um they have to evacuate it by 5 a.m um if they don't evacuate the island by 5 a.m they're going to light the, the lighthouse so the guys don't spray if they spray that retinone rotenone or whatever will kill, kill all everyone yeah beings. Yeah, it's just that. I mean, but, I don't know. If, <laughs> is it I don't that she, she wants more hybrids? Is that she wants more people to get eaten by bugs? Because like, it's be- It's a. I feel like the spraying and killing everybody is better than just the bugs eating them alive. Well, I mean, if you look at it from her her point of view, she's more interested in the project than the human beings. Yeah, human beings are collateral damage to her. This mad scientist idea of the the bigger thing. You yeah. know, it's the old, it's the old Dr. Frankenstein thing. Well, you know, who cares if it kills a few people or I have to steal bodies? What matters is the greater, you know, in their mind, the greater good, which is their, you know, science. The greater good. The greater good. <laughs> the greater good. <laughs> um, yeah, she, her, her motives are weird. She's, she's horny for bugs. You know, yeah, that's I think that's something Nick can, uh, can and relate bad. to. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. make that movie, well, Nick, well, horny I mean, for bugs. Thorax. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie, this movie, and uh, the last big bug movie we watched should serve as a pretty good, uh, <laughs> I, I guess, uh, I don't know, just a study for us that bug movies work. Yeah, and more bug movies, please. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna 
put that out there. So my peak. Next year, we call it the hunt for big bug tober. And it's all yes. bugs. I'm 100% in. I'm it's 100 just all bugs, in. all bug tober. Big bug tober. You I think you're going to go looking for a beetle film. So I think, <laughs> hey, sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch Hard Day's Night. <laughs> well, I, that's a cult film, so you better not. Yeah. I think okay. I think I've I made my position. I was going to pick a bug clear. <laughs> no, I want ants. Yeah, we're I want the bad ants ones or nothing. Ants. What's ants. funny is the connection is uh, the guy who plays the mayor in this, Robert Lansing, uh, plays a much younger, uh, rugged version of himself in another bug movie from the seventies, Food of the Gods. Uh, uh-huh. Not Food of the Gods, Empire of the Ants. He's in Empire of the Ants about the big fucking ants. So yeah, remember Ant Farm Dick Hole? Ant Farm Dick Hole? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I love Ant Farm Dick Hole. You never it's seen it. Lie. You never I, seen I, it. Well, I don't want to see that one. That's probably a porno. There is a porno. Watch I, yeah. I've watched it. There's a lot of like, uh, boobs. Half your identity, mm. Joe, is porno. You know, um, I, I, speaking of boobs, mm-hmm. go on. I just want to take a moment. Uh, the the poster imagery or the, the box art for this movie yes. leads you to believe there's a, a sexualized component. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, I was completely not, disappointed. Not a single boob in this. I'm you just could oh, say, yeah. though, you could say that, that Great cover though. If you look, if you read mm-hmm. between the human and the bug, read between the line that you know we do get a human bug hybrid. So no. true. And, no, I mean, no, no. I wanted to see that lady fuck a beetle. This is more of an artistic interpretation of that. You also can't be more nude than you having mean, your skin pulled yeah. off your body. So if just, you think about it, well, well just you know, just for just for those right. out there who exactly. you know might see this box art out there and think, oh yeah, I'm gonna see some some eighty seven eighty seven boobies. No, no. you're. They're not there, so no. No, I did not. I did not get this to see the left is... boob. I did not get to see the right boob. I didn't get to see a butt. I didn't well, get no, to see no, a no, push. You, the same life as always. But also in the the like the title on the is also made up of little uh, cockroaches too. Yeah. On the the logo, they, I love that fucking poster, man. I grew up seeing that tape, and I was like, so. I mean, I didn't watch the movie then. Uh, didn't rent it, but I was like that cover. I couldn't imagine what this movie was going to have in it. We see a cover like I, that. Oh my god! Not boobs. It's I really, terrifying. I really appreciate how straightforward this movie is. Joe, yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to hear the end. Yeah, the frightening gag. We got all of that during the fucking Get summer it. series. Come, mm. come up with a new one. It was spooky. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Joe, yeah, yeah, okay, do okay. Do okay. Do it try that out. Try it out. Oh, it's it's. Ooh, nah, I don't like it when he does it. Do, yeah, okay, go a little, bit, a little bit deeper, but I, 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 I appreciate A for Ooh. effort, A for effort. Try okay, to I was a, trying to go ghost like. Do a Bela Lugosi Dracula thing. Try to do that like, Hungarian. Yeah, hey Joe, ghost this podcast for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, welcome back, bedridden Buckley. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm just lying. Soon, I'm just lying. It's going to be bed sore, Buckley. <laughs> <laughs> Which has already been bugs, Buckley. Oh. Not not far from Bednar, Buckley. Hey, oh, there you go. That's a deep cut for this the fans. Is his mo- this Adam. is his month to rise up and uh, talk to us, old old ghostly suit. Yeah, he's in the thermos in this movie. <laughs> we got to get him out of the th- old thermos, Buckley. <laughs> the haunted thermos. <laughs> That's what he was offering up. You want some Bednar? So, um, <laughs> so we come back, and Beth is in the basement. Uh, and she's going through some old pictures, reminiscing about the good old days with Ma. And this is where we do get the uh, like the newspaper clipping that says that the mom died of overdose, right? Um, yeah. I don't. Remember. Yeah, what mayor's wife dies of accidental overdose. Page one, right, right above water rates go up in South City. Um, you know, one after the other, the two important it's things that happen. The mayor, man, <laughs> <Bad press. laughs> all said. around raising water rates, and the wife kicked it. Because you, know? you know, someone picked up the paper that day and it said that fucking mayor's raising our taxes again. And they're all oh, <laughs> his wife. Oh no, you know, they they knew where to look. Um, also, it says it's going to be warm that day. That's the weather at the top. It just says warm, um, which is probably what, what they do. Moist. Yeah, warm, cold, oh. cool that day. Um, wet. Yeah, <laughs> that's anytime that's it's gonna rain or high tide. <laughs> um, so she's going through these things, and she does find like the blueprints for the Intech project, which is being kept here in the basement. Uh, and she decides to uh, do a little snooping, a little investigating here, and it leads her to. Uh, sorry, it's Intech Research and Development. That's a whole name on there. It's the Northport Project. 
Um, and so she decides she's got to go check in on Intech, go see what's going on here. And so she gets over there to a no trespassing sign and immediately just like, oh man, this looks boarded up. I'm getting in there. So she goes in and um, has she been here before? She has not been here before, right? I don't think so. I don't think she's been. The first time I watched this, I was like, is this not the same place with that one dog? But it's not, right? It's a different dead animal. Yeah. She finds yeah, a dead animal yeah. after this. It's just a different yeah. one, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she she goes through, she climbs through a little fenced in area with barbed wire and everything. Uh, she does get a little cut up on the way in. It like gets snagged on her back. And she's got like I can't tell. It looks like she's got blood on her hand, but I or on her back, there's just like red, like she got blood all over it. Yeah, she does because later on when she um, changes her shirt, she she takes a shower at Richard's house. Oh and yeah, she's like, I need a shirt, and he does that whole sniffing trying to find oh, the clean shirt. And, yeah, well, she looks at her shirt with a hole on it with a rip, so she does. She gets cut. I mean, she's dedicated to sleuthing at this well, point. She's getting all cut up, and yeah, it's funny though because the shirt's already like, if you look, it's like the bloody, like the red is all already there when she goes th- before she gets through the barbed wire, but then she gets snagged and she's like ah, um, yeah. And she gets in there and she does find uh, just the, the scattered bones and remains of, uh, I don't know, a, a dog, a deer, something, some sort of animal. Uh, she stands up and looks longingly into the distance. And we get back to the horny uh, doctor. And this time the, the mayor's starting to get a little short with her. He's getting annoyed. He's like, look, we're killing bugs. Are we not going to kill bugs or what? And so they get one bug on like a bunch of beef in a smaller glass case and she hits it with the rotenone retinone. I think it's how it's pronounced retinone, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and so she gasses it, but it doesn't die. And so, uh, he's like, do it again with more. And she just, just goes hard. She just absolutely fucks this thing's day up and it kills it. And the mayor for a brief second has hope. He's like, yes. Okay. Hey, just do that to the Island problem solved. I did it. Good mayor. Give me an award. And she's like, no, no, no. One big problem that much right known will kill everyone. It's lethal to human beings. Um, and so he does seem minimally perturbed and then he makes the decision. Well, we got to evacuate the Island. Like we got to get people off the Island. We're just going to gas the whole thing. Like it's, this is our best case. Cause again, the mayor does care about the people, you know, yeah. Um, and so the doc says, hold on, give me 24 hours before you try anything. And the mayor just kind of like looks at her kind of silently agrees. Um, I mean, I, it's like the look he gives her, I don't know if it's like agreeing with her so much, um, as he just like is, is okay with her standing up to him. Um, he's kind, of we, in a, he's kind of in a, in a rock and a hard place at this point. I yeah. Mean, he, yeah. He has to rely on her expertise uh, to fix this issue because he can't, you know, even though he's used to being the guy, you know, with his hands and all the pies. But at the, and then, you know, he doesn't want to piss off in tech because they're, you know, what's bringing in a lot of money to the island. And, you know, I, you know, he's annoyed, but, you know, this whole situation is, is just beyond him. But he's got that poker face probably yeah. from years and years of needing to. And well, and like, I, I suppose for him, it's like, evacuating even though evacuating the island is the right thing to do it's also admitting to everyone on the island that like he did this like this oh, is his yeah, he's fault done you know there. yeah he's yeah. probably done you know and so like i get it you know he's he's conflicted um and we cut back to to beth and she is doing some sleuthing still she's out there she's got her fanny pack and she continues her hike and comes up to a wooden fence at the entrance of a cave um and she sneaks in there and looks around the cave. She finds spray painted in yellow on the wall, Elizabeth and Richards. And there's a heart. So Elizabeth plus Richard. Uh, Aww. Yeah, it's cute. Um, and they used to go old... in that cave and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there were horny teens in that cave. Well, she, and, she gets, uh, every time she sees a stalag, stalactite, she gets excited. <laughs> exactly. uh-huh. And um, she also finds an old Monopoly game. Uh, that has an IOU in it for 100 Monopoly dollars uh, written from Richard. Cute, cute, kiss, kiss, love, love. And that is the end of my section. It's all you, Buckley. All right, let me see. <laughs> what? 
Let's see. Let's see. I gotta pull up my doc. So okay, what you're saying go. is it's my turn. <laughs> oh, like I'm just no. supposed to start talking, right? I'm just supposed to be entertaining immediately. Okay. I'm just supposed to be Fez Watley, you're saying. That's terrifying. It's frightening. No, 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 no. Fez Watley never talked. That was the beauty of it. He cried a lot. <laughs> All right. Wish you were a little more Fez. Okay. So uh Richard pulls over Homer to ask about the bad meat. And they both try to huddle up, but keep going in opposite directions. Yeah, so uh, uh, Homer rides a scooter. I don't know if we've talked about that. Um, but he's, he's, he's a scooter boy. He's got, like, a Hawaiian shirt on. Homer's a real character. It's basically what we got to establish yeah. here. But anyways, uh, fucking Richard pulls up alongside Homer, and they go one way around the truck. Because it's, it's, yeah. it's exactly like Hopper and Stranger Things. It's a big old wagon thing. And they go around and around and around. And it's funny, guys. It's comedy. Joe, did you laugh? No, I personally didn't. Okay, I understand. You're fine. Okay. (laughs) So uh, Richard hands him a bag of roach shitties. And Homer says that they're bigger than normal. (laughs) Roach shitties. Roach cummies. Damn you, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, so the secretary radios in and informs them that Dr. Hubbard was thrown out of MIT for illegal experiments. Well, I mean, I don't want to jump on your butt here, Joe, but I mean, there's a little more to it. He, he shows him the meat. It's not just, he looks at that crappy meat. He's got the T-bone that had been eaten uh, up from the, the grocery store and says, what the fuck are these little things on there? And the guy explains, oh, those are, those are roach turds. Yeah, after so this tasting is the first it, Joe, time, how did you not mention that? Taste he tasted it. it. Mm. Yeah. So not only is that a goof, but it also establishes that this is the first time Richard's like, oh, fuck, maybe we have a big roach problem. You know, because we, the audience, yeah, yeah. know that, but Richard still is kind of in the dark on all of this. And, and so are the most of the people on the island. And I yes, thought it and, was those teens and, again. And gives it the scientific name for turds. I mean, it's, it's worth noting, is what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Um... <laughs> Roach. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth is peeking around the cave and stumbles across huge cockroach eggs that look like testicles. Uh, Richard tries to convince the mayor to bring in a search party. What? That was nothing. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, he tries to convince the mayor to bring in a search party into the caves, but he wants to keep everything quiet. Dr. Hubbard reveals that she's done something involving genetic engineering on the island, and the problem will be taken care of by tomorrow. Uh, Richard hands in his badge to Elias to deal with it on his own. Uh, at the diner, the dishwasher is shooting hoops with garbage, and then he climbs into the dumpster to squish it down. He reaches his hand in, only to pull out a bitten up arm, and the cockroaches devour him. Uh, Elizabeth takes a shower, and Richard looks through his clothes for anything that doesn't smell bad to give to her. <laughs> Joe needs to start doing the beginning of these movies so he can just get to the meat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. She, she reveals... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck I'm, was that? That wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. That's okay, that's okay, I'm just a little bit winded. I know you are. Yeah, she reveals that she found her mom's suicide note, and her dad lied to her in the town by saying it was an accidental overdose. Uh, Homer arrives at the junkyard to share some good old-fashioned moonshine with the drunk man. There's a moment I have to talk about here. Because Dr. Morgan is in the room, and she touches Beth with her filthy fucking blood hand yep yep I'm it's sure revolting it, it's so nasty <laughs> i mean i loved it but i fucking hated it well i mean there's nothing wrong with a blood stump blood stump uh, that seems like a term that gets used a lot in the buckley hey, you want to see my blood stump mm-hmm. <laughs> that's well, what they get thanksgiving instead of breaking yeah. the wishbone they see you can get to the blood stump first <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's taking the roast. stump this year. They can't afford roast, yeah. so they just get this lumpy bone from the, the butcher. And, oh, here you go, it's the blood stump. Oh, we're gonna well, it's this. normally meant for dogs, but... It's like it's like the Cratchit family sitting around that tiny uh, goose and getting her excited about it. Oh, we got the blood stump! <laughs> Best Thanksgiving mm-hmm. ever! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Homer arrives at the junkyard, the shares, some good old-fashioned moonshine with the drunk man, only to find this mangled-up face that the cockroaches chewed through. Yeah, Elias gay. calls 
Oh, okay. Uh, Elias calls Intech to tell them to gas the island. Richard and Elizabeth just got done making a little love, and she tells him that he should go back to Los Angeles with her. The mayor says that if Intech won't do anything, then the next call he makes will be <laughs> the, the mayor's in bed too. If you didn't know, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's yeah. watching them. <laughs> At least they cut to Joe. Well, Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, he wanted to make sure that his daughter was having safe sex. So he was laid in bed with them. He inspected their parts just to make sure that they were being safe. I think that's a good dad. Yep, yep. Does your dad do that when you and Tad are together? No, no. I have never been with my cousin Tad. That's just Does he give you jerking rumor. off pointers? <laughs> yeah, he well, all the jelly donuts change your grip, first. son. You're you're you gotta yeah. go like this instead. And you're gonna mm-hmm. get give yourself the a laptop. stranger. Sit on your hand till until you can't feel it anymore. Yeah, you're, you're you gonna know, type... I, got, I got some old salami in the back of the fridge. You can use that. For I've what? used it, but you can borrow it. Yeah, what uh, are you doing with? You know what? Never mind. Yeah, put, yeah, you put don't like want to know. Big, that's, yeah, put, that's, cover your that's, hand. Hey, with hey, it. Put, hey, Joe, what happens next in the movie? That's a thick. Then my section's over. Oh, yeah, you're great. You've been over for Christ. 20 minutes, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is so it Ryan, right? Is I go fast. You know? Am I next? I go fast. I'm, I try to make these podcasts no. go swimmingly. I no, make them no, smooth. Ryan's next. Yeah. All right. Come so, on, Ryan. Uh, ben... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> God, that was, sounded like a monster. Uh, ugh. So, I'm uh, a manners monster. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, Manners uh, yelling over my voice when I'm trying to, you know, do my part. That's not Manners. All right. I miss it. So uh, Beth shows Richard the old IOU from the, the Monopoly game while she's selling California real hard. Tell him all the reasons he'd love to move out there to California. He's smiling because he's unemployed now. He quit. He, you know, he tended his badge. So he's like, all right, yeah, man, California might be in the cards. Yeah, totally forgetting, you know, uh, Lillian, but whatever. Uh, then they kiss. Their kissing is then interrupted by Beth noticing the dozens of loud cockroaches crawling all over the fucking bathroom. <laughs> uh, Richard then lifts uh, the top of the toilet tank and it's full of bugs, just packed full of bugs. Uh, they jump in his truck and uh, try to get Millie on the CB. And she tells him that the bodies of the Gordon kid and the missing tourist girl have been found. Uh, we cut to Jenny. We haven't talked much about Jenny, but Jenny is the niece that is staying with the Judeline character, and she's always listening to music. Uh, we cut to Jenny, uh, and she is carrying a tray of pancakes up the stairs of the house. Uh, she trips and drops a few of the uh, pancakes on uh, the they're, they're chunky pieces of pancake and sticky. Uh, drops them accidentally uh, on the carpet. She picks them up, puts them back on the plates, and delivers them to Mrs. Pennington, the Judeline-looking character. Uh, who is in bed, of course, because she has the broken leg. Uh, The camera then moves down to show that Jenny's feet are covered in syrup, and then they just (laughs) go tread out the door. You know, just... Like it was like it was like she was squirting syrup, syrup all the way up into the bedroom. Like I don't understand how this happened. <laughs> she was like, uh, she was just making a little bit of foot fetish videos, like in between the. Well, I mean, the, she's rubbing her, She's rubbing one like the filthy yeah. foot up against her leg. Maddie yeah. asked me if this woman was trying to draw the bugs into this room to kill this older lady. No, I like that. But how she was all coated. Right. I'm like, I don't think she was. Uh, I, like who no, I think she's though. supposed to be like dumb. She's just like, yeah. Goofy she's got teen. her big headphones on. Her feet are almost always sticky. So this isn't that weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Old Jenny. Do you want me to anyway, drip some uh, syrup in your cast? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a dip. Just like the doctor ordered. Dr. Well, thank Pepper. you, honey. Give me that Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Damn it. So, uh, so while Jenny goes in the bathroom and is doing her hair and listening to her headphones, Mrs. Uh, Pennington enjoys her flapjacks while watching some TV. Suddenly, she notices there's a roach on her blanket. Disgusted, she puts the tray aside and starts whacking at the bugs with her cane. There are more bugs crawling all over her cast and all over her bed. They're obviously biting her feet. She starts squealing. She calls out to Jenny, who, of course, cannot hear her due to her loud uh, headphones. Uh, Then we cut back to Mrs. Pennington, who now has a big old mouthful of roaches just crawled up in her mouth. And that's presumably the end of Mrs. Pennington. We never really know what happens to Jenny. Uh, meanwhile, at the lighthouse, Dr. Hubbard is doing some science and she realizes that this new breed of hybrid roach are immune to the retinol. Um, cut back to the beach uh, or cut to the beach where Richard and Perkins are loading up the found bodies, uh, bodies into Perkins truck. Maybe Perkins is also 
the corner. I don't know, uh, but why he's, you know, maybe it's easy only with a truck. I don't know, but he's helping. He's, he hauls the bodies off in the back of his truck and there's also a fishing pole. So it's just very uh, unprofessional. Uh, Beth then tells Richard, uh, I need to go back to, to her father, the mayor, and make him explain everything. Uh, while Hubbard uh, gloats about her genetic roach achievements into her tape recorder, uh, Elias mm. sets up the plans for spraying the island with the retinone. It's set for 5 a.m. the next morning. Elias tells them that if he can't get the island evacuated in time, he will turn on the lighthouse before 5 a.m. to let them know not to spray. And while he's having this conversation, it's kind of hard to hear on the phone because we see that some of these roaches are chewing on the wires. You know, they've gotten into the guts of things in there. <clears throat> They're going to cause some electric issues. <laughs> uh, we cut back to Perkins and he's driving the bodies in his uh, truck. Uh, some roaches have infested the truck. They crawl on his face. Ah, he drives off the bridge. Uh, then uh, back to the uh, cut to the diner. Lillian this is a great scene. This is a uh, sort of reminiscent of Phoebe Cates and Gremlins, where she's like behind the counter and just trying to deal with all the crazy uh, little monsters, or in this case, bugs. Yeah, yeah. I like the but flasher she, gremlin. Uh huh. But she's uh, talking shit to all the bugs. You know, she's throwing some sass. Yeah, the there's bugs some music yeah. playing in the background, and yeah, La Cucaracha a, is playing on the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah. And she uses uh, the microwave. She uses a spatula. She pours hot coffee on them. She uses a blender, a deep fryer, and a toaster to, to kill these bugs. She's not moving any faster than she needs to. It's an inconvenience to her. Yeah. She's her life isn't on the line. It's just She's the enjoying it's it. just bugs. Yeah, it's just like well, fucking goddamn it. Where's Homer when you need him? Bop 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 bop. Yeah. <laughs> He's, again, no. and it's, I what? No. He oh. said dough, no. Ryan. Like oh, Homer just, Simpson. Uh, take a take a take a rest right now. Take a okay, little okay. Take okay. a snowball. Joe's take a little nap. He's getting down to no. <laughs> <laughs> You're just oh. gonna be a, just a big sloppy embryo laying there in about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking translucent. <laughs> He's like gonna Senator be a side Kelly. jote in no time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, oh, boy. so uh yeah and again this sells me on lillian again she's she's fighting all this she's grizzled she's upset because obviously at this point richard's not been around she knows her life sucks really bad right now so it's like yes the bugs are more of an inconvenience and she's fucking pissed and it's just it's a great it's a great fun bit especially with the song yeah. and soundtrack um cut back to um uh, elias he radios to dr hubbard because you know she's doing her science up in the lighthouse and he tells her all the, the plans. We're spraying the island at 5 a.m. If we can get everybody off the island. She then tells him, well, here's the thing. The, wrote note, uh, the retina won't work anymore as this new generation is immune. He's like, fuck. Well, he tells her, well, then I guess just turn the lighthouse on. I guess that quickly. <laughs> it's like, uh, fuck. I mean, he makes the right choice. He's not yeah. even trying to wait. He's like, all right, well, even though I just made the plan, fuck it. Make sure to keep the lighthouse light on. I mean, it's already on because it's the middle of the night. But let's say. Yeah. Um, I cut back to, to Homer's place and he's making some sort of special bug killer mixture. He's grabbing bottles of, uh, of chemicals and he's talking to himself. I'm going to make the money. I killed one generation and your grandpa's generation. And he's, you know, talking all the cockroaches that he's killed many cockroaches in his day and he's going to kill them too. Um, but as he's very <laughs> haphazardly putting together this special uh, bug spray, he splashes a bunch of it on the floor and in a weird choice in the middle of his sort of Clint Eastwood tough guy talking shit as he goes out the door bit, he throws down his cigarette in a dramatic fashion. The sloppiness um, it, bothered me at first. Like, I'm just like, why? Like, why are we doing this? The payoff I appreciated. The, and I did appreciate the payoff, but there's a, there's, there's, it tells me a lot about this character that he, he doesn't realize yet that he slopped anything on the floor that should not be near a lit flame. He still threw a cigarette on his own kitchen floor. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would have like, made more sense. It, and again, I think the movie would have benefited from this overall as if, if the island was lost, like the, I we're done with the island. So I don't need this fucking house anymore. Like yeah, he's just, yeah. if everybody just got sloppy as hell. They'd have, yeah. yeah. I'd have fun with that. You know, if they were trying the evacuation at that point, if they hadn't yeah. yet. And so you saw a lot of people just kind of hustling to get the hell out. So, but anyway, he throws the cigarette down and it lands right next to uh, the, the spilled uh, poison on the floor and it blows up his entire fucking house. It just explodes instantly. <laughs> and like, and that's, yeah, there's no there's no other purpose behind it. We don't go back to that. It's not like something important was lost that we need later. It's they just blew up a house for fuck. Why? Why not? Like, yeah. 
like production value. We got a house. Let's blow it the fuck up. Yeah, sure. And uh, but we don't know. We assume, is this Homer? Did Homer get out? Is he dead? We don't know. Uh, it was a pretty big explosion, and he's right in the in the threshold. So I don't think he got out, but we'll find out. Um, anyway, uh, so while Hubbard uh, struggles with to light the beam because there's there's some issues, she's trying she's striking, you know, like you're gonna hotwire a car or something. She's striking these things together. I guess that's how it, turn on the light at the lighthouse. Even though I think it should be on because it's dark out, but whatever. Um, while she struggles to light the beam, uh, Beth starts confronting Elias back at his place. We cut to the cap or the sheriff's office. So there's a lot of this. We're getting that back and forth cutting. So it's boom, yeah. Hubbard's struggling with the light beam. Boom, Ellis Beth starts talking uh, to Elias about what the fuck's going on. Boom, we cut to um, the sheriff's office where Richard arrives and he finds Millie. We finally see Millie for the first time in the movie and she's dead. Millie is dead. Cut to the diner. Richard shows up at the diner. The diner is empty, uh, but the whirring blender is still going out. Something's fucked up here. He turns the blender off, draws his gun, and he starts looking for Lillian. Now he's concerned about Lillian. He uh, has, a, has a feeling in his gut. He opens the walk-in freezer, and God damn it, there's Lillian. She's dead, not from the bugs, but she froze to death. Because uh, obviously, to get away from the bugs, instead of running out the front door, she and that's a regular locked herself thing. in the freezer. Like, why? Why are people I don't not understand? Like, and again, this is the writers. I'm not. I don't have an issue with the characters themselves. It's, like, it's the writers chose for this to be the way that it had to happen. But like it's like if they had shown a scene of like I don't know if those the outdoor bits with the dog and the cat were supposed to establish that you're not safe outdoors. Well, they didn't do a good enough job. Like it needed to be clear that if you're outside, these things will fucking find you. Yeah. And that's not the case. I mean, like we do get somehow cockroaches are fucking sixty mile an hour cars. They're getting on them. I don't know how, but like <laughs> it, it like they just needed to do a better job of establishing that the outdoors was a dangerous place to be. Yeah, and in Lillian's case, I mean, look, she again, we're the audience, so we're we're privy to all these other scenes going on, and all the people are. But Lillian's been at the diner all day; she doesn't know fuck all about psycho um, roaches or anything. Obviously, yeah. she's fucked up because there's tons of roaches in her. She should have ran out the door. I mean, I don't think she was would have thought there's something bad outside. I mean, there, no one's told her that they're all outside. But regardless, well, and also she, he it, it, Richard shows up, and the bugs are not there. So yeah, it's no. like, yeah, they left. I think I don't, she didn't open. check. I, yeah, I would assume 30 minutes in there probably won't kill you. It's not good for no. you. But like, even if it was 10 minutes, just pop the door open and look like yeah. she's blue and frozen. She's, you know, <laughs> also yeah. just change the temp of the fucking deep freeze. <laughs> just turn it <laughs> off. No, no. Then the meat will go bad. <laughs> Tyler Boy, Joe's bad. Good point. No, <laughs> oh, I told you take a, take a rest. One time. No, I, it's yeah. just. It, it's weird because one, I mean, we have to, you know, avoid logic in a movie where bugs are killing everyone, but like she dies very quickly in that freezer, meaning it's incredibly cold. But like you said, did she not at any point go, I better check on the bug situation? Like she didn't and, open the door. And, and we established she's a tough ass. So she's going to yeah. fight back. She's the last person I think that would huddle in fear in a freezer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's bizarre. Yeah. It's a disappointing end to, to a great character in this Just movie. Just helps so the body count, I guess. Yeah, like, man, and whatever. adds to the guilt factor, and adds some of the guilt factory yeah. factory, the guilt factor to Richard. <laughs> because look, man, while you were running around trying to, you know, get relive your your youth with your ex girlfriend, um, the woman that had been here for you for who knows how long, to the point where you were almost thinking about marrying her. I mean, you weren't totally turned off by the idea when Shaky Jake brought it up. Yeah, you've just abandoned her the last three days. And now she's frozen to death. You know, so <laughs> well, I like her, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like her. Um, so yeah, so she's, she's, she's dead. And, uh, while, um, while Richard is sitting there feeling guilt and feeling grief, uh, all of a sudden the door opens and boom, there's Homer. He's covered in soot, uh, because of course he was in an explosion, but otherwise he's okay. He's a little crazier than usual. Uh, he tells him like, Jake is dead. My house blew up. Now <laughs> here's my problem. And then, then my section is done, but here's what my bride problem with Homer at this point. He passes the fucking blame for his house blowing up on the roaches. Now, the roaches have done a lot of bad things. I don't like what they did to that cat and that dog in particular. However, the roach had nothing to do with your house blowing up. That was you being a fucking lazy bum, slopping the shit, and then throwing your own cigarette in your own house. That's true. Like, but I, like li it, I liked it because that's Homer. Blame the roach. That's Homer. It's like yeah. nothing's Homer's fault. Like in, And not like in like a like a shitty, like I'm an asshole all the time and I can't take responsibility. But it's like if nobody saw it. He old Homer didn't do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the it was the roaches. Yeah. There was a, there was a rumor that it reminded um, me of Joe too much, maybe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, you know that's Definitely that's understandable. And, but there's you know, there's right. maybe a rumor that um what is it Miss Spellman. Is that her oh, name? Uh, what the hell is Pennington? Pennington. Yeah, Miss Pennington. Somebody, Miss Pennington, had a gentleman's suitor, and it, oh, ain't old Homer. Ooh, oh, but it was. You think, you think Homer, I, I could see Homer with Mrs. Pennington. Oh, I could yeah. see Mrs. Pennington enjoying it because normally a guy that looks like uh, Homer is not going to be attracted to her, but because Homer's got a few things broken upstairs, he doesn't know, and he's like, "All right, well, hell yeah, you, you all come spray your bugs, and uh, you it's, know, it's like the pool boy thing." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, bug boy. Maybe that's how she got her leg broken. Homer got carried away. But she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's got broken she's away. Like, she's fucking carried like, away. Yeah, but she. But Maybe she he tried to carry her away, and they fell down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I like to do that thing like in nine and a half weeks. Lift me up and put me against the wall. And Homer's like, Well, fuck, I'll try. And then <laughs> <laughs> Homer, he's trying she, actually, she falls through the drywall. They got to do drywall repair. <laughs> drywall repair. <laughs> All right, but that's the end of my section. Dry roll. I want. I just want to. I want a half hour of Joe eating peanut butter and just reading the dictionary. (laughs) (laughs) Antelope. Antelope. Anime. Okay. Okay. Eggplant. Is there something about you laying down? You do you, the the spatial uh, situation between your mouth and the microphone is messed up more than usual. Oh yeah, well no, it is. I, I'm my, the microphone's very close to He's my mouth it. because of how <laughs> I addressed it. You ever just didn't laid notice? On you, or you are you holding it? Or is it just laying on you? I'm I'm holding it. Okay, well, just hold it a little farther. It away. starts with an A. Okay, I can okay. do that. Do you think there's no, eggs I went all the way to the E's. No, oh, I went so you to just the skipped E's. everything from B through E. You're like, yeah, well, it's... yeah, yeah. That's mostly that's mostly worthless words. I'm just trying to that's get to true. the N. Yeah, of course. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get us through to Trevor's part into the end. Okay, so Daddy Mayor is with Daddy Mayor daughter, uh, and he get when he gets a call from Doctor Morgan on the comm system. She's informing that there's a malfunction at the lighthouse. Um, he doesn't respond to it because he's sitting there and he's twisting around what looks like like a gold necklace or something in his hands, and he's right next. I mean, next to his daughter. And by the way. We didn't talk about this. Uh, I forgot about it. There is a scene very early on where Elias, daddy, he meets with, uh, is it somebody from Intech, another man? And those two motherfuckers are an inch away from their noses touching. That's Perkins. That's Perkins in the, <laughs> oh, in the that's early Perkins days. in the beginning. Yeah. Filthy. They're real yeah. Filthy. Yeah. He's right up here. I'm not yeah. going to let some fucking stupid ass merchant roam my plans here. Did not and like that, that one bit. This, little bitch boy. This, Robert Lansing's a tall dude. If he's, you know, I, I, not just from this movie, he's a fucking tall dude, this guy. And so he's, when he gets up in, in your face, he's intimidating yeah. even as an old man. Well, sitting, he's sitting down in the chair and his daughter's like squatting on the floor. He looks like fucking cramp is about to eat a child. Um, <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, oh, God. Okay, yeah. He doesn't respond to the calm thing from uh, Dr. Morgan. Um, and he's, he starts talking cryptically with, with Beth about how he only wanted to help the island. Um, and then we cut away to Dr. Morgan, who's at the lighthouse. Um, Dick Tar and Homer enter the room. Um, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Morgan and Dick Tar, or, or, or Dick Tar goes up to Dr. Morgan and says, I wish you were a man, but since you're not, and he shoves the gun under her chin. Um, and he asked why the roaches are killing people and how, how do they stop them? So <laughs> I wish you were a man so I could punch you, but instead you're a woman, so I'm going to murder you. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I thought it was, he, he was saying I would just shoot you if you were a man and wouldn't get answers. Yeah. I couldn't quite understand it. But anyways, um, well, yeah. so yeah, and she's not, she's not buying it. She's got, nope, nope, uh, I don't really know what you're talking about. And then he cocks the hammer and then she's like, Bleh! and um, starts spilling the bug beans. So Doc Morgan was working for Intec trying to find an alternative to pesticides. And, and they, they figured out that over time, these roaches and bugs get immune to whatever the spray is. Um, we cut back to Daddy Mayor and, and Beth. I mean, he's explaining that the roaches, um, what they were developing was a roach that eats other roaches, which is an interesting concept, kind of like the mosquito thing going on now down in Florida, where there's like oh. the mosquito that um, it, it's supposedly supposed to like only last like a generation. And that's what his bugs are. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what they're doing. Oh, no. Gonna Sean's going to be living this out in real life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, in one generation, the, the roaches are supposed to die out once you introduce this roach eating roach. Um, uh, but then they begin to evolve and develop. Well, into what these... eats the roach eating roaches? Yeah. 
That's what I mean. And yeah. then you got to get a gorilla to come in for that. And then you got to get a, <laughs> like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, you immediately go from roach to gorilla. Like I like yeah. that leap. <laughs> then the whales. Is, well, nothing else can kill a roach eating roach, but a gorilla. <laughs> well, what's gonna kill the gorilla eat, or the roach eating roach eating gorilla? <laughs> what's gonna eat that? Man, nukes. Yeah, they, <laughs> nukes. <laughs> yeah, fucking nuke the island. Fuck it. <laughs> Forget it. Um, but anyways, yeah, the roaches begin began to evolve, and they and, and, and like it was like every every generation they would start turning into new species. So now they have all these. They're, they're roaches, but they all have their own different uniqueness is, uniquenesses. But anyways, they started to develop social instincts. And then at one point, Homer posits, like, so they're intelligent? And Dr. Morgan's like, maybe, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> Possibly. So then Homer's like, well, wait a minute. That must mean that there's probably a queen out there. There's, there's this hive mind, like, social conscious going on. And Morgan's also like, well, maybe. Um, then we're back to Elias, um, and he explains uh, that by letting in, in, Intech test, the company would invest in the island. So he, it was like, I just was trying to do what was best for the people here. I thought that this would be mutually beneficial. And he tries to justify his action, but Bath ain't buying it. She says something real dark. She's like, you're doing to the island what you did to mom. And it's like, we don't really know what he did to mom. Like, so she killed herself. So I guess maybe like he iced her out just wasn't like that's probably it like he wasn't, there wasn't for around her because yeah, yeah he was so obsessed with with what's you know being a good mayor really i mean yeah again i can't it's hard to you know to get mad at elias he was you know he took this kind of thing where he's like well all right you got it sounds like a good idea you kill all the roaches and then you'll bring all this money to the island and all right kick ass and then when she going south he's trying to fix it the best way he knows how what i would buy yeah what i would buy more similar to what you're saying about him and his relationship with intech is if the mother killed herself because she hated just living there like that's why her daughter left like so her daughter leaves and now she's got nothing it's an island of 700 people who the fuck wants to be there you're doing to the island what you did to mom you filled her with roaches (laughs) (laughs) He, he sold her to intech Oh, oh, she's the queen. That would have been dark. Oh, that would have been dark. Yeah. Man. And her face comes out. I just came like, back from the. Just, uh, I just had to take a leak. What's, actually, what are we talking about? We actually don't that. know that it's I not her, right? You, <laughs> the idea Daughter. that. With Trevor, we're, we're like the idea that like, Elias, you know, because Beth says to Elias, you're doing to the island what you did to mom. And we were thinking, well, maybe he sold uh, her mom oh, to Intech. Sold, and, oh, and she's and good. The fucking monster the, queen. The headline, it was all bullshit. It was all yeah, bullshit. It was. Yeah. Cut this what out. She Cut this out. Let me remake this. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're going to do that. <laughs> oh, that's but, great. Oh, man. Well, anyways, better uh, movie. Elias and Beth are there. The lights start to flicker and we're out. This is again back, a lot of that back and forth cutting. It's yeah. the third act. Um, we're yeah. at the lighthouse. Dick Tar and Homer are reiterating the rules of the bugs to Doc Morgan, i.e., the audience. They're walking around or doing that classic thing where they're like, So, what you're saying is this, that, and the other thing. But, anyway, the <laughs> rules are that the living bugs may be killed by the incoming helicopter that's going to spray the r- rancicide or retinol, retinol, or rectamide. Um, but the Direct bugs juice. will, or the, the eggs will not die. And when they hatch, mm. those, those little babies will be immune to whatever the spray is. And you could keep doing this over and over and over again, but unless you're going to get all those eggs, it, it ain't worth it. Um, so they leave the lab area of the lighthouse and we get this lingering shot. There is a, another tank, clear tank. There's this gelatinous brown brain blob thing sitting there. Ooh, I wonder what this could be. So we're back to Elias and, uh, he kicks the fuse box back on. And he starts digging around the electrical system, just loaded with bugs. They're in the system. All right. So he calls on the comm system to the lighthouse, and Doc Morgan answers. And um, he, uh, Elias is like, hey, get Dick Tar. Uh, I need to talk to Dick Tar. Uh, but Morgan says that they need to focus on the light. Um, so she says, hey, I, you're probably in trouble. Get yourself a fire extinguisher. That CO2 will freeze the roaches. Um, mm. And at this point, bugs are now coming. Uh, through all the doors and the windows and the drains of the house. It's a mess. Um, the lighthouse gang can't get the light up, so uh, Dick Tar says he's going to call Beth. But Morgan says, oh, no, 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 don't, don't worry. I just talked with them. I talked with Beth. And she says that they're doing just fine. She loves him, and she's counting on you. <gasps> and so Dick Tar is like, all right, uh, Homer, get the light working. <laughs> like He's got fucking <laughs> nothing to contribute. 
Um, and then we cut back to the basement lab at the lighthouse and the brown brain slop. Um, or I'm sorry. Or no, no. Wait. Yeah, this is at the lighthouse. The brown yep. brain slop opens up and it starts to come. Yeah, uh, and there's no other way to say it. There's just yeah. white liquid shooting out of this thing. Yeah, it's coming. You got any thoughts on that, Joe? Oh, yeah. Well, it's exactly <laughs> like how I was coming a couple days after the accident to make sure my dick still works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. okay. That's the first thing uh, when Joe woke up in the hospital. Does it work, Doc? Does it work? Yo, your ticker, your neck, <laughs> uh-huh. it's all fine. My dick! Did uh, I come? Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I've never seen it work. <laughs> We haven't been able to get it to stop yeah. <laughs> since frankly, we got here. Frankly, Mr. Buckley, I've never seen anything like it. You came yeah. uh, before when I saw you last week. Your your dick was completely mangled, but after the accident, it's 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 in perfect health. It's been reassembled. It's, it's yeah. incredible. It's it's it it's, it's perfectly <laughs> hard one inch self. What's because Listen, when you doc, get the ground, we're, we're paying you. Now. <laughs> it's been Lodged in his prostate. What's that, uh, Joe? Huh? Oh, with listen, Doc, we're paying you like several thousand dollars. The least I can get is a happy ending. No! <laughs> Who's we? <laughs> hey, your dad talking? Cause uh, oh, him and Ted. They always split happy Ted. endings. Uh, who's gonna give easier. my son gonna... a handy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I never get the second part. I only get the first part. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're back, at, <laughs> we're back at the mayor's house. Um, him and Beth are losing the fight with the bugs. They're doing all sorts of shenanigans where they're lighting the fucking fireplace and crap, and they're all lifting up fucking rugs and shit. There's <laughs> bugs everywhere. They're fucking toast. Yeah. So they, they they start to leave the living room area, and they walk past a bathroom, and it's fucking loaded with bugs. So they shut the door, and they're, like, holding it shut. These bugs aren't going to open a fucking door, and they have we haven't established that they can eat through the fucking wall. So basically, it's like, you know, the, and we, we've seen shots of people, like, shoving shit under the doors, you know, to, like, get the, like, little nooks and crannies. But, like, <sighs> this was not done well. The dad's holding the door shut. They both look desperate. Even though the, the, the rest of the house is fine, there's no bugs there. It's basically that living room and that bathroom and the basement. And so, for some reason, <sighs> Elias is like, don't worry, I've got this. Opens the door, runs in. Go run and shuts the door. He just walks in to get fucking eviscerated by these bugs. And Beth is like, oh, oh, oh. And then she like meanders. She's not running, barely walking. She meanders upstairs like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, I don't fucking get it, guys. So anyway, she goes upstairs and she goes in her mom's bedroom and just shuts the door and like lays on the bed for all I fucking care. <laughs> we're back in the lighthouse dick tar and homer hear some glass break doc morgan wasn't was already gone they go to investigate and they find morgan staring at something she's down in the lab area la- lab area lab area um and she's just staring in the darkness she's like wait I might come back out um you can't see what it is but then you hear some meowing um something jumps around the room Ooh, ooh it spooks the mystery team and then it lands on the lab table it's a bloody cat bug hybrid. It's covered in blood. It has mandibles and antenna, and it makes all sorts of like bug and cat sounds. Yeah, so, it's weird. So Dictar, like they, this bit that I, it's just fucking like sixty seconds, and like I thought I was like deja vu, like psychosis. Dictar keeps telling Homer to run upstairs and grab the gun, and while I, he's gonna handle it, but then Morgan says, "No, well, don't do that." But then they just keep saying it. No, 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 Homer, go upstairs and get the gun. I'll take care of it. No, don't do that. <laughs> well, anyways, the insecticat fucking launches at uh, Richard as a, or Dictar as Homer goes upstairs. Um, and, and the insecticat latches its mandibles around Dictar's throat while he's on the ground. And Dr. Morgan grabs a fire extinguisher and like is just, she's looking like, oh, I could study that thing. I could get my fingers in that thing. Oh, I don't want to spray it. Oh, I don't want to spray it. I really want to understand. I want to stick something in its ass and get the liquids from it. Oh, but then fucking Richard's like screaming like a fucking bitch. And so she's like, fine. And she sprays it. And the insecta cat jumps around again in the dark. Well, Homer comes downstairs while those two are trying to figure out what this cat is. They can't see it. Homer's walking real quietly and he's, he's like kind of like on, it's like a round staircase that, that comes around down into the room and he can, he's looking down and he sees it. It's right behind him. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And so he steps out onto like this cabinet thing, um, this large cabinet 
and whoa, like Shaggy from Scooby Doo, he knocks it over. <laughs> it lands right on the cat. Just fucking boosh, green goo goes everywhere, and then he falls on top of the cupboard thing. Like fucking just shenanigans. Um, but then he said he gets up and he says, "No bug too big, huh?" <laughs> you know that classic phrase that you hear all the time. Yeah, yeah. We're well, anyways, need a bigger bug. <laughs> We're back at the house. Beth is <laughs> hiding in the closet of her mother's dead mother's bedroom. Um, she's shoved like some clothes and shit under the door. And they then, uh, them, yeah, exactly. Like if they can eat fucking steak and dog, they can eat clothes. Um, and if they can eat the binding of of books, God damn it. Anyway, something falls on her. She panics. She thinking, and I think she she has another fire extinguisher with her. Uh, but it's like a piece of her mom's jewelry, and then oh gosh, what a touching moment! And that's it. I'm done. Um, we get a very quick uh, me and Yang Gang because uh, we're almost done. Um, we get a very quick scene of Doc Morgan or whatever her name is, like patching up Richard's neck, and he says like, "Oh, you're always a bitch." I don't know. He says something about how she's like kind of bedside <laughs> manner. She's cold. <laughs> Something I don't know. It's a very quick scene. We don't really talk about it again. Uh, then we go You're back. all clammy, lady. Yeah, that's right. You're cold and clammy. Um, uh, Beth goes down the stairs. She leaves the uh, the closet. She goes down the stairs with the fire extinguisher and is looking through the house, um, and f- goes to the living room. And there's signs of a struggle. There's like the coffee tables on the floor. There's some books strewn about. I think a chair's not overturned. Um, then she hears Richard calling on the radio. She's like, hey, c- come in, Beth. Are you there? Uh, Beth's dad's name. Are you there, Ma- Mr. Mayor? Yada, yada, yada. She hears him. She goes over. R- Richard, we're here. I'm here. I'm at the house. My dad's dead. Blah, 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 blah. They're talking. They're formulating a plan on uh, about him coming to pick her up. But as this conversation is happening, we see somebody, we see a POV move through the house and open a door. And there's Beth's back to us and we're getting closer and closer and then we see beth's face again and who is it coming up behind her but dear old dad and he looks kind of not great he doesn't look too great he's all disheveled he's got a weird look on his face um (laughs) and uh they they hug and he's back as like a weird zombie and he's all covered in goop and when she like releases him from the hug she's got blood all over her hand she starts screaming freaking out. oh my god and then i'm pretty sure she screamed do do <laughs> i think so yeah i think so um mm, mr then... burns <laughs> yes that is a character <laughs> of of Joe that's homer's, homer's second <laughs> catchphrase is just mr burns <laughs> we should get a monorail <laughs> that... yeah, did, are you saying boo or boo earns do the Bartman. <laughs> inanimate, my shorts. An inanimate oh, carbon rod. We should replace Joe with an inanimate carbon rod from the episode where they <laughs> yeah. gave a ticker tape. I call the it. big one bitey. Yeah, I remember that episode, Trevor. From, thank you, Nick. I'm glad you do. Um, <laughs> I can remember things. And don't do what Donnie don't does. How about that, Joe? Remember that joke? <laughs> Nick does. Um, uh, so <laughs> then. It wasn't it. That's even. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I only like one through eight. His chest rips open. And the rest of his skeleton, a bug infested skeleton, walks out of his own skin. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think it's the best ass. way I could describe that. And it is yeah. awesome. Yeah. It is one of the best things we've watched on the show, I think. Yeah. It is just so fucking wild and out of left field for this movie. Like, I don't know. I I didn't think like the hybrid stuff was that crazy yet. I just, I didn't expect this. Yeah. This hybrid cat is one thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is a whole separate ballgame. Yeah. And this is the reason I own the nest is this shit from now. (laughs) For the last 12 minutes. About the last, that's what I've, because it just gets crazy and it's that great time in the 80s where it doesn't matter what movie you made, you had to have some crazy fucking effects and everyone's like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. It's and great people that could do it and would do it. And yeah. no matter and it what looks good. It looks pretty yeah. good. It doesn't, it doesn't do much. Like he doesn't move much, but they shoot it in a way where it doesn't matter. It's still yeah. interesting. It's um, so good. 
fun. So as soon as he walks out of his skin, um, Richard is there and he he heads in to get her as bug dad. Um, oh, and he Richard comes in as bug dad is like completing his transformation and like the mandibles come out of his mouth again. His um, eye pops out. Just like a, like a, uh, his eye juts out and he steps on it. <laughs> yeah, just it's like just boop. <laughs> like yeah, a great it's, na- it's nasty um beth uh oh the whole time beth is fumbling oh god with the shotgun shells no i gotta get him in i can he's coming close to me and oh geez um and eventually yeah, she manages to shoot him a couple times he's got blood spurting out everywhere and, well she shoots um, his arm off his left arm oh that's right yes but they cut back to like a, a medium shot from behind him as he's like moving towards her and you see her mm-hmm. on the ground but you see his arm still yeah, he's got both arms. So yeah. <laughs> they had one bug dad. Come on, the nest. <laughs> yeah, where's your continuity person? Um, and and she like ends up on the ground, and she finally gets it in there into the shotgun, cocks it, and puts it right in his mouth, and boom, yeah. and he's done. It was awesome. He's out. Yeah, it was great. Good time. Awesome, awesome f- fight, I guess. <laughs> um, uh richard yeah richard is there and he's um and they're back outside now but the lighthouse is uh burnt out there's no light or it's not burnt out but like there's no light coming out of it um so richard sends homer to go fix the lighthouse and the doctor um wants to be the one to go into the caves with beth she wants to take beth in because she's already been there recently she already knows the ground um, like the layout and everything. And Richard says, well, so do I, like, I've been in there just as many times. Like I, I'll just go. You two don't need to go in there. I'll go. Um, so while this whole thing is going on, Richard's sitting in the station wagon and he reveals that he doesn't know how to drive a car actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Richard's yeah. like, Jesus, fine. All right. So he goes over and I guess is just going to give him a crash course. So he starts right. like, yeah, here's your key. And you got to turn this and, um but as he's doing that dicking around trying to teach him um the uh the doctor just takes his truck <laughs> with beth and just drives away which i thought was pretty funny um uh so that's great so richard jumps in the car with homer and they just drive off uh the two cars are heading over to the caves and they've only got 15 minutes until it's midnight and then we're all gonna die um <laughs> The guy's car. Oh, so we're like seeing them drive there back, back uh, or there to the beach slash uh, lighthouse where everything is located. Caves are right underneath the lighthouse or near them at least. Um, and we get a couple oh, shots ba- of them very close. We find yes. at the end. Oh yeah, there's a secret entrance that goes right to the boss room. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> um, the guy's car. I I loved. This it doesn't make any sense, but I loved that the guys have to fight a bunch of bugs while they're in the car trying to get there. Yeah, that, that was, was so fun. much fun to me. <laughs> um, so they're they're just driving in, it's just cockroaches all over the car trying to get in. They like they're crush like, one with the window. Oh, yeah, they, they're <laughs> trying. Oh, yeah, they're wheeling it up and it's like crawling in and they cut it in half <laughs> by rolling the window up. That was fun. Well, there's a moment where um Homer. There's, you know how like the the old cars had like the the main window on the passenger side and the driver's side, but then they had like the little window. Yes, the, the tiny little, he, he yeah, kicks a bug and it smashes yeah. out the window and he screams, "Got it!" and then sprays through the <laughs> hole. Like, but there's no other bugs there. But I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's good. Cool. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just Homer being Homer. Yeah. Um... <laughs> They're filled in. They're like the glove box is filled with them. They're coming through the vents. There's a part where there's one underneath Richard's feet and he steps on it and then it camera cuts to his face, cuts back, and there are now two dozen. Like, yeah. it just, it, it's uh, so multiply. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, how, that's how cockroaches do. Yeah. Um, then we get some shots of the girls. They're in the cave now, um, Beth and the doctor, um, and they're bringing the explosion, uh, explosives inside. They start setting up the bombs. Um, then we go back with the boys and they're still, they're still just killing these bugs trying to get there. Um, the radio gets turned on. There's classical music playing now. This is very funny. Um, they're killing bugs on beat. It was great. Um, the car runs out of gas. I think it runs out of gas. Yeah, it does. Okay, yeah, that's what I think. I, I wasn't yeah. sure because they show the, the, the dash real quick, but I didn't catch like what was happening. Uh, but they run out of gas. And um, once they're stopped, they notice that all the bugs on the hood, they're like, all moving in the same direction now like they're going towards something and um 
Richard asks, like, what Homer, like, what, what is it? Like, what are you, what are they, what are they doing? And Homer says, it's probably, they probably have a queen and she is like sent out a signal for them to basically come home. Um, and that we must be close. And Richard shoots the radio off to get the music to stop. I love that. that was great. And it's so out of left field, really, for the tone <laughs> of this movie. Because yeah. it's, it's it, you know, it's a Butcher the Baker's uh, goof. You know? yeah. it's, well, it's, it's like the house blowing up. It's like, yeah, I want yeah. more of that. Yeah, it's more so, of it. Like, we're done so here. Good. We're never coming back to this. Like, even if they said that, like, I'm not coming back. Like, I'm not living yeah. here anymore. Fuck it. We're going to raise Torch this place. Yeah. 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 And and he, I, one of the things that it's, it's not just that he shoots the radio. It's just how he does it. Because. He's not he's like looking look at, at yeah. he's looking intently at at Homer and listening to what he said. And he's yeah. just gonna and it takes you a second to realize what the fuck? Oh, we shot the radio off. And then yeah, I I love it. It's one of my favorite things in this movie. Yeah. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's really good. Um back in the caves, we see Beth is finishing up. Uh she's a demolitions expert, apparently. Uh she sets up these bombs are set for five minutes. Um, and then Dr. Hubbard, um, find she's like just exploring the cave she finds those weird like urk eye <laughs> nutsack things yeah. hanging from the ceiling <laughs> um and she starts to take some <laughs> starts to take some samples from <laughs> she's taking samples from him um meanwhile okay. homer's uh topside uh trying to fix the lighthouse oh yeah hey as uh richard heads to the caves um, I have a, I have a Dr. Lady, Dr. Hubbard, see something coming up to her as she's taking these samples. You see something kind of out of focus walking up to her. And then we see in its glory, the queen. Oof. And the queen is a giant, like four or five human skeletons fused together. One of the faces still has like a face and like eyes and stuff. Well, there's like three faces in there. Well, there, there's a couple. I, I don't know how many have actual faces and how many are skulls, but oh, there's okay, a couple yeah. of each. There's no, like a couple full skulls cool. and then a couple of faces and maybe half. Face. I don't know. It looks nuts. It's it's kind of like like I think Joe brought it up earlier. It reminds him of the thing. This is like oh, the yeah. most thing looking shit in yeah. the movie. It looks yeah, there's, awesome. <laughs> there's another movie that does something around that same time called Leviathan, which is one of those underwater movies that you got a bunch of. You know, around the time of the abyss, and the monster yeah. at the end of that is also like this. It's like everybody saw the thing and was like, "Fuck!" You know, all the effects yeah. guys were like, "Need to do a th- I want something yeah. like at the end of the thing. I need Even a if thing. it doesn't make any sense, make yeah. the monster have just a bunch of the faces and shit of the other people uh, yeah. that we. It's cool. Hate. I like, love it. Still it looks Give cool. Me. Yeah, me it's timeless. <laughs> yeah, monsters want, always gonna be fucked up that. humans. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, she, it's the queen. Um, they uh, she, the queen attacks. Um, Dr. Hubbard and rips her arm clean off. Um, yeah. uh, Richard then makes it to the nest in time, just in time to see Dr. Hubbard get killed by the queen. Um, it's basically like holding her up in front of its face and her, its mandibles like s- stab her in the head. I love <laughs> it. it. Cuts the top of her head off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love this it. Is the, yeah. This is like the gr- most gruesome uh, kill on screen. Um, I think he's like the only on screen kill um that i'm aware of in the movie human at uh, least how you well yeah, human yeah. at least um, <laughs> bug, bug dad's head gets blown up on screen that's yeah. true i would that's argue true. that he's already dead right that's what i'm yeah. saying it's like bug dad yeah this is a whole separate thing yeah um beth fights the queen she's got like a stick she's stabbing <laughs> stabs yeah, in the chest because doesn't <laughs> she, like, Richard give it she brought from home the journey yeah. of the stick like i just yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know <laughs> um she and Richard escape just as the bombs go off. Also, as Tyler alluded to a minute ago, there is a weird little like <laughs> hideout, secret entrance into this nest from apparently the um, the stairs leading down to the beach because yeah. they Richard is in there. So when the girls get there, it's made to look like they are walking through the caves for a bit. Yeah. 10, maybe 15 minutes to get to the nest. Yeah. Richard arrives, runs down the stairs and is there immediately. And with that same efficiency, he and Beth are out. It's like Mario Kart. Maybe the yeah. two, when they went in, they went too fast. They didn't see the obvious fake wall that they yes, could crash the through. invisible wall they could just yeah, clip through <laughs> exactly they didn't think about it and i'm yeah. assuming that's why they they set up the whole monopoly board and the i love I you so. shit because yeah. like okay richard would know that there's a yada 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 but yeah but when that thing goes off 
they cut to the main entrance of the cave. Oh, like yeah. the big entrance that they come in. Huge explosion. And in my wild imagination, I immediately pictured those two fucking like a rocket out of that hole getting shot. Like Lando Calrissian. Yes. Seeing them soar in the sky and land in the water. And I got so fucking pumped. But of course, that's not what happened. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Not even close. Yeah, because they weren't out of the cave when they cut to that shot. It's like they're they're like, because there's like a hole that they're crawling through. It's like that pressure would have boom. Oh, shot them out. (laughs) Yeah, the like rocketeer. Rocket. Yeah, or the rocketeer, one of them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they the bombs go off. The queen is dead. Um, and uh, Homer gets the lighthouse back on. The day is saved. Richard and Beth hug on the beach. They embrace. Oh my lord, we did it! But uh, we zoom in on their shoes, and there is a bug on one of their shoes, and we zoom <gasps> in closer and closer and closer and then it is over in the no. credits. <laughs> so, no, the the most no. abrupt ending to you know, any... i caramba i caramba indeed and we that's get it a fun theme song though uh, yes <laughs> and it's i, I yeah. love theme song it's, so. it's fun yeah and that's and there that's you have it. it that's the nest Trevor's uh, pick for uh, the second annual Hunt for Bad October on a scale of malevolent to benevolent. Trevor, what have you? Oh, I got to Like, I'm not. I'd like to think that even if somebody else picked this movie, I would rate it the same. Um, I uh, this is a full, full five star benevolent for me. I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorites, just like um, Doll Factory, Insecticidal, um, Lucky Stiff, of course, is a favorite of my own. <laughs> of course. Ice Queen. I mean, like yeah. top, I'd say this is probably top five malevolent movies for me. I absolutely love this one. Um, bold statement. I, it, hey, I'm a bold man. Is bold the right oh, word? Fuck. What is he <laughs> The bugs got the bugs are getting pilot. <laughs> oh, Trevor just had to run to take a leak, and we saw him running back, and he was doing a, a little bit. I was trying to do a spook. I didn't like that. That scared me. <laughs> I, I, hit, I hit my knee on the chair. <laughs> yeah. Look his face. Is there mandibles coming out? Are there? Yep. Uh-oh. There's oh, so no. many bugs in that bathroom. <laughs> That's not a mustache. That's mandibles. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hold a great up. fucking line. Hang yeah. on to that. <laughs> yeah, That's well, a big caterpillar. That's right. Come on, <laughs> Joe. Hopping on his face. All right. You know what, Joe? You're next up, buddy. What did you think of the nest? Uh, I en- I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was pretty well made. I liked uh, I liked all the uh, creature effects. I thought those were really well done. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it was like uh, competent all the way through. So, Well, on a scale of I, malevolent to benevolent. What I would go uh, benevolent. Well, good. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll see what Ryan has to say. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, this is uh, absolutely benevolent. Yeah, top top shelf benevolent choice here. Uh, like I said, I own the movie. Uh, I have it on my shelf. It's one I watch probably every like two or three years in the summer because it's got a summer vibe to it. I'm like, yeah, I feel like watching The Nest. It's a fun movie to have on in the background or just sitting down watching it. Um, I think all the characters are great. Um, I like that it starts out as sort of a bug movie in a goofy small town, and then it turns into this whole other thing with the fucking crazy creature, the thing type of monster at the end. And love the effects, you know. Um, it's it's a low budget movie, but they did uh, pretty goddamn good, I think, with the budget that Roger Corman probably gave them. Um, all the actors are great. I love seeing these guys. They're, they're in other movies I enjoy as well. So it's it's it just. I don't hate any of the characters, even the goofy characters. You know, sometimes these movies like that bit in Aquanoids with the guy on the on the boat can turn into uh sketch, you know, can turn into a, a, a skit uh, sometimes when you get the goofier characters. But even Shaky Jake, uh, I thought was was a good character. I mean, I like everyone in the movie. It's a pleasant, it's a pleasant experience. It's it's not taxing, it it doesn't piss you off. Uh the goofs and the gore are fun. So I yeah, absolutely uh, benevolent all the way on the nest. Uh Nick, what say you? Uh I like the nest. Uh yeah, this I, I'm surprised that, you know, this felt so very much in line with what malevolent movies typical stuff is except like good like they it it just border borderline like 
a real movie, uh, which <laughs> it is. It just got, you know, I'm guessing shelved or I don't know what the history behind this is. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if this was like a direct to something or just missed its mark somehow. But yeah, this feels I like this a lot. Um, I don't like that they killed a bunch of bugs. I feel bad for the bugs and that cat, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm going benevolent. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Zach. It's so... Honestly, the first half of this movie, I did not like this movie. It ain't no it was, insecticidal, baby. It's no insecticidal. <laughs> they didn't get in there. There weren't any any hot young things. You know, so, like what were the name 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 you name one of those bugs? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bug oh, bug bug names. So, Crumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, the first half, I mean, it's it's just it takes so long to get to the bugs. Uh, that being said, obviously it's uh, it's benevolent. It's fun. The the like the design of Bug Dad and the Queen are so just so damn good. Um, it's obviously benevolent. So um, yeah, benevolent. Tyler, I think uh, you're the last one. Yeah. Um, I, soft benevolent. Uh, still benevolent. Um, I think I've made my critiques known at this point. It, uh, I, while I enjoyed the slow, campy 80s start to developing your world, you know, it, it wore thin and then it just didn't move quick enough. And and then ultimately there's a lot that I think they had there was potential like there's just a lot of potential that they didn't utilize because I think they they were making something else. It just wasn't the movie mm-hmm. that I wanted it to be. But there's plenty to like, like the the, the creature effects, um, uh, you know, some of the intentional and unintentional humor you know the the sight gags you know it it was enjoyable um i I mean i'd recommend watching it you know i can understand why it probably got a early blu-ray release from who was it scream factory yeah 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 Yeah. like i I totally get it like it's Mm -hmm. like i i enjoyed the diner scene just to see the um the old 80s um uh, uh mini boxes of cereal that people would eat on the go yeah and yeah. like just like all like i just liked seeing it it was just nice because it's not like in your face and it's not you know it's just it is it was a, a movie made of its time and it's just it's just a cool time capsule so lo- enjoyed it loved it you know had a good time with it um you know it ain't no spaceship terror uh <laughs> no it's definitely not but um i that do was, i am curious uh, how it will stack up to next the next uh, movie. Uh, Mr. Walsh is not here uh, to announce his pick. We already know because he, um, I can't remember the name of the curse. Oh, hang on again. a minute. I got it here for you. Hold, please. His curse. Sean <laughs> was cursed with the hysteria of time. Yeah. So he, <laughs> had- he had to select his film within 48 hours of us recording the intro episode. And I, I think it was technically hour 49 when he told That's me. That's fine. He, there's some, there's some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, time, time, extenu- time zone. Extenuating difference. circumstances. You know what, actually, maybe depending on when zone. we finished recording the yep. announcement video to when he picked, maybe it would fall under that. It actually, let's just say it did for the sake of Roddy. All hail Roddy. Love you, Roddy. Yeah. All hail Roddy. I mean, Hope listen, okay. it was, it was damn close. Yeah. Yeah. But his two key words were, pres- were possession and cult. And this is a movie whose name has been uttered already on this podcast. Ryan, I'll give you the honor. Oh, from 2000, it is The Convent. What can you tell us about The Convent, Ryan? Uh, It was uh, the second movie from Mike Mendes, who's directed a lot of movies. He's a a very prolific guy in the indie, the L.A. indie horror scene. Made a lot of fun movies uh, and, and still continues to do so. Um, and it's sort of, it's an evil dead riff hundred percent. It is an evil dead mm. type of knockoff. And I don't think it tries to, to hide that. It's a movie that Sean and I watched together in our old movie club. And we've quoted it for years and years and years. There's just one character in particular. Uh, he's the cult leader and, uh, you know, his dialogue is something that we've quoted for years and I, I've already rewatched it. I'm going to try and get another watch in obviously, but, um, some of the dialogue, even in 2000, was eh, cringy in characterizations, even more so now, 21 years down the road, as can be expected. But I still think it's a fun, short, brief movie, and uh, it's got a, one of the best opening scenes of any indie horror movie I've ever seen. 
Mm, um, and it's fun. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I think it's going to fare well. I think uh, overall it's going to fare pretty well. So, well, good. Awesome. So, uh, I just shared the rating, uh, sheets for, um, the nest and spaceship tear. So go ahead, boys, if you can, uh, get in on that and, uh, share your ratings. Um, and then who, who's up next? I think, would it technically be Joe? Mm, yes, it would be Sean and then Joe. Cause Joe and I switched. Yeah. Okay. So Jody, do you so think you'll be ready Sunday. by Wednesday to make your announcement? Yeah, I think so. Okay. This oh, Wednesday? So you don't, you don't, yes, you this Wednesday. Wait, uh, no, no, I don't have it yet. Okay, okay. Um, Joe, I'm very interested because I know yours is Anthology and Werewolf, and I keep yeah, stumbling yeah. across a lot of movies that satisfy that. So I'm curious. Have we done an Anthology yet? Not yet. No. It's and, first one. Oh, I'm so no. fucking excited. Hell yeah. And I, yeah. Anthology is going to be interesting because there's, uh, like, what if – Two of them are just dog shit. Well, I'm gonna say probably most. I mean, hey, we're going. Like, but if all two out of three are it's, it's trash, the movie, you know? it's the whole movie. As long as it yeah. has, you you can't fault Joe for not every uh, right. part having a werewolf. But, but we also don't yeah, judge. Yeah. But we have to judge the movie as a whole, right? So that includes Absolutely. the wraparound. That so like mm-hmm. maybe the werewolf section is amazing, and the rest sucks shit. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Hey, for that's Jeff. that's exactly right. That's a roll of dice. Roll the roddy dice. But yeah, I because I I have a very hard, I think a, I had a hard uh, to do both keywords. <laughs> but I found ways I could do it through anthology. But then I knew Joe did, so I was like, no, I can't mm. do anthology. Oh, Tyler, do you want me to tell the boys the one we're definitely not doing because it doesn't fit? Go go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Trick or treat. Yeah, well, that's good. fits perfectly. Obviously. Well, well there's a, it's except for the level one spirit. And it, yeah. yeah, I've seen dozens on Tubi that have werewolves and that are anthologies. They say in their description, werewolves, <laughs> vampires, da, 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 da. Like, I don't a know dozen. there's dozens. Also, <laughs> also that that's we were like complaining, it we were complaining like that Blood anthology. Diner has 5,000 reviews. Trick or Treat has 85,000, Joe. Yeah, Trick or Treat's well, amazing. Well, no, 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 Joe, no, Joe never once said that he was going to pick it. He did say... Hey Tyler, would it, it would be, be funny, funny if I picked it, would it be to funny. pick off it would piss be. off Ryan? And I said yes. Sure. Of course, it would be very funny. Ryan being yes. angry is funny every time. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> oh, I would yeah. get real mad, but I would be happy to watch Trick or Treat. It's, you know, it's good. Very yeah, good. It's well, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so. a great movie. Okay. But, um, well, boys, right. we're we're off and and rolling or racing or bugging. I don't know. Yeah, all here. of it. But we're yeah, here. A little bit of bugging. We're all full of bugs. I'm chock full. Well, go to the doctor again. Get cleaned up. Yeah, if you're full okay. up of bugs, you got to go back to the doctor. Oh, no. I already went to the doctor twice this year. That's all I can afford. Well, that's another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, anybody else have any thoughts? Joe, do you want to hit us with some Simpson zingers on the way out? <laughs> yes. Um, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me think. Every like, episode uh, from now on of Hunt for Bad October, I wanted to end with Joe throwing his zingers. Except for okay. his episode because he's not on it, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's gonna be Let's interesting. All go out for some frosty chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> sure thing, Dan. Yeah, yeah, Marge, how could you possibly gamble? That was in an episode. Uh, yeah, that's my retire in Greece. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Okay. What else you got, Joe? I Nothing. Oh, <laughs> who who would ever buy something from a left-handed store? <laughs> Are you just looking up? Uh, I think it's just taking plot points and just like <laughs> creating lines. Lisa, that a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, my son's Get a bad out student. of town. <laughs> what? What does Maggie sound like when she's? Oh, Bart! Yeah. Jesus! Bart! <laughs> Bart! Bart! Can you imagine being Joe's parents right now? They're about, he's already aged them even more than usual the last two weeks, and he's downstairs, and they're just hearing him screaming Bart right now. <laughs> Just laying bark, bark, bark. face up, staring at his ceiling, screaming, barking. Bark, bark, That's bark, nothing. Bark. And then and she's, Judeline is probably thinking, how many times have I told that boy no Simpsons? And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bob Buckley's like, you know what, Julene? Let him have this one. He's laid up. Yeah. The boy's laid he's up. 26. He's 26. He's 26. He can finally watch The Simpsons now. Yep. He's suffered finally- enough. 
<laughs> stop, stop. He's already dead. <laughs> now that's a good Simpsons line. Ah, that's from The Simpsons, Joe. Anyway. I know. I well, know. are we no, done you recording? Know, you fucking yeah. turd. Okay, yep, we're All done. Right. Joe, right. just, just give us one more dough, Joe. Oh!